Bullock. Quick handball to Hocking. Back to Lovett Murray. He goes short. It's a mark to Zaha Rakas. Zaha Rakas has kicked the goal. The Bombers are in front of the G. It's time to strap in and get ready. The leaders in AFL Supercoach are incoming. Helping you win your leagues and climb up the rankings. You're now listening to the Insight AFL Show with your hosts, Big Horse, Skitty, and Herbie. G'day and welcome to the Insight AFL Show. I am the horse and with me, as usual, Skitty. How are you, mate? I'm fantastic, Horsey. I'm a little bit uh, Class A today, which I know a few of the boys from our Discord chat will love. Bit of a red wine night for me tonight, so I'm going to be a little bit more professional, a little oh. bit more switched on tonight. No, I'm oh, still going to be the mate. dickhead I normally am, mate. You How are you doing? <laughs> you're going to go from zero to shit-faced really quickly. Uh, I'm doing all right, mate. I'm, I'm looking forward to the footy, mate. Now that footy's back mm. and it's on... You know, most nights actually, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights without footy, which is all well and good. It allows me to spend time with the uh, the other half and the kids. But when footy's back, yeah, it's proffies and footy, the two Fs. The other F, I'll let you work out. But Ooh. tonight, we're reviewing round five or previewing, sorry. You're not going to want to miss this because we've got a few trading targets we want you guys at home to target. Who to fade this week and also some injuries that are going to affect your super coach team and some, potentially some players that you may bring in. But if you haven't yet, please hit like, subscribe, and put the bell on. Be a triple banger. And also, the little thumb down the bottom, give us a thumbs up. The more thumbs up we get, the more coverage we get, the bigger we get, the better the quality of information and show that we can bring you. Also, jump into our Discord. Inside Unlimited is free and for a Zinger Box upsize burger on the side, replace the potato and gravy with a dinner roll. You get access to everything that the experts do. Our trades, our captains, exclusive premium Q&A every round of Supercoach and a few other cool perks. Entry to our Discord, though, will always be free. So if you want to get involved and talk footy amongst the community, just jump on in. There you go. And you're miming some stuff while we're going. Yeah, our Unlimited right. League, 913351. I repeat, 913351. We've got heaps in there at the moment. It's awesome. Exact number I'll have to check out a bit later on once I bring my team up. Mm-hmm. But a super coach ring for the winner. And it costs Ooh. you nothing to enter. So if you haven't already, just jump in. Enjoy the ride. Mm-hmm. Our current leader is a fella by the name of Tandy, who is the Tandy. coach of the yeah, Tandy. Chicken Tandy's. <laughs> Ooh. SC Uncles, he is the coach of, and he's currently oh, sitting 79th one. overall. Sounds like so, he's touching everyone up. Yeah, so he got 2353 on the weekend. He did all right, but Damn, very nice. Michael, not me, but another Michael, who is mm. the owner of team Dr. Hoofenstein, was the top scorer in our Unlimited this week with an enormous 2,441. Ooh, damn. Which was, Love I think, it was that. only 30. No, it was. 60 off the top score. So he was ranked 202nd for the week. So to Mick, congratulations. That's fucking awesome, mm. mate. That's a huge score. Sensational. We love to see mm. that. Now, mate, we, we've brought in a few extra segments that um, the people at home have, have loved. And we're yes. going to start off with number one being Skitty Squeeze of the Week. That's right, horse. We gave we foolishly uh, we should reiterate our T's and C's that there can only be one winner per week. So if you guess the same as someone else, no, 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 no. Yeah, that will be changed from now because we had three winners last week. So we the sponsors went no, Skitty, you settle the hell down, stop giving out all of our shit. But either way, good way to first kick it off. But the squeeze of the week is now open. So get your. Um, Get your uh, tips in. I'm going big balls this week, horsey boy. Yeah. Right. How, how big? How big your raggets? Jezza Cameron, one sixty three. I think he is going to push Ooh. all up over the ground and destroy North Melbourne. Um, I don't think they have the matchup to be able to contain him. Um, I, I I know what Charlie Common did last week was absolutely phenomenal, and still he's very good for our super coach, but. The way that Jezza was pushing up against the dogs, I think that he could do some serious damage if he can be asked doing it. But 
that's where I'm going. I know you you like to do it at the end of the show, so we'll leave it to there in our captain's choices. No worries there. I just want to say a very quick hello to everyone in the chat because we love all you beautiful bastards in here. Horse, there is a comment from Deadly. Please highlight that. Horse's boner isn't as big as, big as Skitty's wang. I love oh, the comment, one. Deadly. Yeah. But it's factually incorrect. But thank you very much anyway. Um, Deadly, Tommy, <laughs> PW in here, Hamo, Ian Johnson, Kiza, our boy, our, our um, what do we call him now? Presidente, the Presidente. Yep. Scorch, that Discord operations Easy. manager, yep. Absolute legend, P- Jacob. And we got, we got PW in from the UK as well. Love your work, mate. Thank you for joining oh, us. The UK, Love thank your you so work. We'll and get to your question. We right now, will get apparently. to your question. No, we'll get to it now. <laughs> but for anyone that drops a question in the chat tonight, we are, do have a question segment at the end of our show that we will address all questions. So please yeah. don't feel like we're going to ignore you. We're just going to address them all at the end because we don't want to break up our information that we've done the research for and to give you guys the best of what we got. But the we exception will, tonight is, is no, Grundy really at, What's that? Yeah. I said we, we normally say that, but then we see a good comment that, yeah. intertwined with what we're doing and we just go yeah fuck it no worries we'll just check that in as well let's go with this and then we'll leave the rest for later is Grundy mm-hmm. really a necessary trade this week is the better overall picture to keep him given his break even which is likely to remain flat for the foreseeable future and spend the cash elsewhere or elsewhere PW I don't see Grundy having the ceiling as he did three four years ago so we've seen already yeah he went big in the preseason but he's been quite stagnant I guess he hasn't really gone that large so far this year. So for some people, they're downgrading into Meek, who's got a negative 14 break even and could effectively be the same price as Grundy in two weeks' time to use him as a stepping stone into Gorn. So for me, I'm trading him, but I'm trading him to Gorn this week, mate. So that is my move so far this week. Can you do the other one as well, Horsey Boy? We got to promise uh, Agent Cheese. Hey, gents, oh, yeah. would you yep. rather have Heaney and Flanders in your forwards or would you rather have English and Heaney? Come on, make up my mind between the two. I know that I, – well, I believe that Flanders is going to be a top six mid for pretty much the uh, rest of the season. I think that he should probably be in everyone's forward line. But right now it probably makes more sense to get English in, get your English and gone because I know he has gone as well. Um, get the English gone. You're good for your rucks. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, and then Flanders still being a smaller price at the moment, you should be able to still probably be able to get him in in a couple of weeks' time. So um, that's where I lean at the moment, Cheese. But also, too, if you do want to just secure that forward role with Flanders, I don't hate it. Yep. Also, too, Sam Darcy is absolutely destroying how much time that English is getting in the ruck, and it's really goddamn annoying. Yeah, it is. You're right. Um, I'm going English first, but then Flanders is my target for potentially next week. And Kizza, thank you. I did just run over it with the Clippers just before I jumped on, mate. Hopefully it makes you moister than an oyster. <laughs> but anyway, we've got games to talk about because we could talk shit games. all night if we really wanted to. But our, fir- <laughs> our first lot of games is going to be brought to you by... Our original sponsors are sponsors at Standard Squeeze who are helping you drink responsibly Squeezy. and conveniently. You can go to the website, thestandardsqueeze.com, and use the code INSIGHT15 to get yourself 15% off everything in store. Mm-hmm. Now, our first game, Skitty, that we're going to talk about tonight where I believe teams are already out, Melbourne Whoa. versus Brisbane. Great game, that, and I believe we are getting a debutante from the we D are. in uh, – Col- how the hell am I meant to say that? Colton Tholstrup, I believe. I know it's Colton, but I don't know. Tholstrup, I think. because let's, Cosi- just, let's just call him the Thrush. Oh, Thrushy. Love that. The yeah. Thrushy. Big, yeah. Um, Cole Thrush, like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, because Cozzy is obviously out from being suspended because how the fuck did he think that he was going to get off from elbowing someone in the face? It's got me stuffed. Do you, know, I, do you know what? It runs in the family. Byron used to run through people for fun. <laughs> hey, but we love that. That was fantastic. The, the first thing I heard this week as well, per Damian Barrett, he goes, Cosy Pickett's going to challenge uh, his one-match ban, and Lockie Fogarty's going to challenge his one-match ban for punching Fife in the face. And I went, how? Hey, how on? If, if, in, fa- in fairness, though, if Carlton got off, 
Loggie Fogarty this week. It's already confirmed what we all already know. And that Carlton are a bunch of goddamn cheats when it comes to the tribunal. But either way, that's the only one. Brisbane uh, unchanged, uh, so it says. Lockie Neal's 250th game. Um, seems like that ankle is fine. He did have a interrupted training session, we'll say, this week uh, due to the ankle that we all thought was fine that got him subbed off during the third. That was just management, but now it's obviously an ankle injury. So I think he's all sweet there, mate. So that's pretty much all we got for because we don't have teams out yet. No. Well, there you go. <laughs> so teams haven't dropped yet. But for so, Melbourne, uh, Maxi Gorn. So he's got an average of 130 point for one. Break even yep. of 75 this week. Now's the mm-hmm. time to get him if you want him without having to upgrade through elsewhere. His mm-hmm. last four games, he's gone 162, 113, 177, and 129. And hot tip, my squeeze of the week, Max Gorn, 190. Woo! Damn! Okay. Melbourne at the MCG against Brisbane, who could not win a game there last year. He's going large. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't mind that. You, and it's not scaring you off the fact that he has the buy next round? Not at all. Beautiful. No, I've, I've got enough cover and I've got enough money in the bank to be able to bring in another primo next week. Beautiful. I really like that, mate. Um, what do you reckon about the old sex track, Christian Petraka? I like him. I like him a lot. <laughs> I don't think he's going to drop too much. No, nah, I don't think so either, mate. Um, he's got an average of 122, break even of 140. He's just an absolute gun. Like, currently he's 660K. Um, so, while, while yeah, you, he made... you going, mate, I'll, okay. I'll bring up the, I'll bring up the, sh- uh, the share screen for everybody. Yes. As you're talking. Yep. Yep, so absolutely. Um, I like that, keep, mate. Yeah, um, keep talking, mate, and I'll sort Yeah, he out. may drop a little, but, you know, it's, it's not going to worry. I think he's still going to be one of the best mids um, in – uh, AFL Supercoach this year. Uh, Clayton Oliver, he's got an average of 82 and he's already lost 131K. Oh, he is going to be a juicy bring oh, in isn't he, mate? I've, just, I've got it here. He's got a break even of 156 and he's going to drop another 30K this week if, he's, if he scores 90. Who the fuck did I read? Oh, he Which, has an average of 86. Oh, I thought yeah, he had a break he, even of 86. <laughs> I was like, that's so not bad. The last three weeks, he's gone 82, 92, 62. So he's going to be lucky to make that. If he drops another 30K, what's he going to? He's going to be nearly 500K after the buy. Yeah, absolutely. And he, wow. I reckon that he's still got that um, I reckon he's still hand. Got that hand injury that he was running mm. with last week that made him absolutely scared as all shit to be able to get a contested ball. So, um, yeah. yeah, we'll actually see that too. Deadly said, remember when, Remember me when Gorn goes less than 100? Deadly, I am in the same boat as you, brother, and I hope that he does that too. Hey, Deadly, <laughs> remember we when I'm fucking winning the squeeze of the week, mate. <laughs> G'day Global as well. How you doing, Jax? And uh, James, nice to... to see you, mate. Oh, we love that, boys. Um, Jack Viney, uh, the only other Melbourne player averaging over 100 so far this season. He's at, mm-hmm. at 102.6. Um, he's priced at 358k, break even of 133. No, just not in the range where I'm liking it. No. Caleb Windsor. Gone? I think so. He's got if you've still got him, I mean, as we can see on the screen there, he's got a break even of 22, projected score of 57. If he gets 57, he makes you another 15k. It's a slow burn, isn't it? Yeah, I think he's it, it, like the role and, and the time on ground and everything like that was there, but mm. the subs to start the year and yeah, I, I still think they favour Langdon. Like they just love Langdon's side of the wing, and it's not like to say that Windsor's playing like shit or anything like that. It's just, yeah, it's just not fully there for me, mate. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all I got. But I'll tell you who it is. Time to go. Let's hear it, Jack Billings. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. Yep. We got we got something for Mr. Billings, don't we? I think we've played this about six times for him. Put your cones in chat, boys, because Billings has got to go. See you later, mate. Um, <laughs> he's done. Um, Blake Howes, um, he has a break even of 30. So <laughs> guess what, horse? I was about to sell him last week, but I'm holding him again for another week. You're not. He's he's holding on by the length. Um, he's holding oh. on by not much. Okay. <laughs> okay. <he's> not... <laughs> 
Good. Good. Yeah. But, you what know, about- he, yeah, break even at 30. So, like, you know, he just got there. Stephen May is in there. He can do it. So, you know, I may as well hold. There's other people that can um, can do it. <laughs> Here's the same, backing up the ice cream truck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, yeah. Judd McVee. So he he's never going to go at 95% disposal efficiency again. From his 20 touches, no. he scored 119 this week. He does take some kickouts, but then so does May. And so does Salem. Yep. And there's someone else there that takes kickouts as well. So it's a huge yep. risk, maybe in draft play, but definitely not in super coach. The thing that also really pisses me off about Joe McVeigh, do you know who um, has the worst ki- um, play on from kick-ins efficiency in the AFL is? Is it Judd McVeigh? Correct. It is Judd McVeigh. And that is not something I like to see. Get out of the goddamn square. Get out of the square. No one should be kicking in from the square. Get out of there. Let's wow. talk Brisbane. <laughs> Before we do, I've actually I've just had a bit of a brainstorm, mate. For the for the people playing at home or listening at home and all all good audio platforms, mm-hmm. let's let's throw out another chance for people to win a prize this week. If you okay. can if you can pick who is going to be Skiddy's cone of the week come Sunday <laughs> night, you will win a prize thanks to the guys at the Standard Squeeze. I'm willing. So throw one out there for the guys. If you can pick who is going to win the cone of the week, we'll send you a prize. All right, but do I have to not look at any of the chat from now on so I don't have any favorites? Because I can I'll, just be like, I'll write, bam. I'll, I'll write all of them down, mate. All right, like that, mate. Because, uh, yeah, that's fantastic. I love that. Yeah, there's probably going to – hopefully there's going to be some more nominations like Nick Hind last week. Yeah. Um, Brisbane, Lockie Neal. Average of 122 so far this season. Still only in 2% of teams. Averages 96 in his last three against Melbourne and coming off um, that great game against North. It's obviously never going to be that easy for him again. So we'll see how that goes, mate. Um, Dunkley, you ready or no, not yet? Not yet. No. Not yet? Not not at the G where Brisbane uh, historically play quite poorly. Mm -hmm. Do you remember last year when the lights went out? At Brisbane, yes. and they were up by like 40 points, and Melbourne nearly came back to win. Yeah, the Gabba, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that was that the was last good. time they played any good against Melbourne. That was brilliant when um, uh, James Brayshaw, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've already, I've already read yeah. Hamo. I'm yeah. sorry. It's, like, it's smart boy Hamo because there's a very good chance I'm just going to give it to Matt Crouch. Just because oh. Hammer will probably be in my inbox telling me how shit he's playing, and I'll he, be like, yeah, he's, right. he's a fucking flop. Anyway, <laughs> Dunkley, I reckon we can hold another week, break even of 129 at the MCG. He might drop to 580, 570, 70, sorry. If he gets there, I really like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Harris Andrews, good. mate, strong start to the year, but 68 and 76 in his last two games, mm-hmm. which means we're fading. Humor Cluggage, average of 102 this season after going 110, 125 the last two weeks. Did you know the last two games he had one possession two weeks ago in the first quarter, two possessions last week, and still ended up with 35. So yep. he seems to be playing quite well after the first quarter, but I'm not willing to bring in someone that's, 529k that struggles to find the ball early. So mm. this next one, I've actually been asked about by our friend and sponsor of the show, Ryan from Astute Newstead, Dane Zorko. If his hamstrings hold up, he could be a really nice pod as we're probably struggling for top tier players in our forward line, Skitty. Yeah, mate. Now I'm uh I'm trying to get on board with it. For absolute, like to be 100% fair with you, I know that he's had some injury concerns and everything like that, but that halfback role is absolutely juicy as all hell. Yeah, um, so I could definitely see, yeah, I could definitely see him actually be able to do it because he is a forward as well, which is quite nice. So I, um, I can see him actually being able to do that. I just don't know if it's going to be whole season long and how much we can trust his body, but. Where he's playing positionally on the ground, I like that. Yep. Kai Loman, though. Yeah, this, this is, is also, interesting. Yeah, someone that I've been messaged about also this week. Um, I don't give a stuff if he got 88 last week. He's done fuck all before that. And it was in a yeah. game where they were absolutely smashing the roofs and the ball was down there like yep. so many goddamn times. More times than I've been into the pub this year. Like, 
Of course he's going to be able to score well, but that's a huge what are you going to get when he's not? Like when the ball's yeah. not down there, what else does he do? Nothing. So the only I'd way rather... I can see this being a good pick, mate, is if Charlie Cameron gets dropped. And he has been an absolute or, spud this year. Or um, Stinky Linky. Yeah, he, Linky's not getting dropped. He plays a nice no. role off the ground. Neither is yeah. Charlie, though. Like, yeah. you're not going to be able, they're not, none of them are going to be able to get dropped. So it's like, how's Lyman going to fit into the team? So, yeah. and, how's he, and then how's he going to score? Uh, for those of you that uh, continue to drop comments in the chat, we love, love your work. You. Absolutely. We are going to get to get the questions <laughs> at the end. We do promise. Uh, Nath Esmond, he's awesome. just dropped one in there. He's ranked 720 overall, so congratulations so far, mate. We will get to your questions. Uh, Corey, nice to see you in the chat, mate. We love what you bring as well. Thank you, uh, Fr- Friday Also, night. Deadly, yeah. Deadly, very quickly, mate, if you're trying to win Cone of the Week, stop putting North Melbourne players in there. There's a genuine good chance that I will pick Stevenson, Tucker, or Core, though, because that is absolutely fair. Uh-huh. <laughs> My money is on Nick Hine going back to back. But anyway, <laughs> uh, Friday night, we see the Doggies face the Bombers at Marvel. So, mm. Timmy English, average of 124, break even of 148. Don't even care about that break even. Surely we see Bevo <laughs> just let him run loose on the ball consistently. Priced mm. at 691K. In 2020, Tim English scored 204 Supercoach points in a game against Essendon. His last two since, 134 and 123. How big do you think he goes this game, mate? See, now these are the ones where I look at and I go, okay, English did score that well against the uh, against the Bombers and Draper. But Bombers have a new, um, a new Ruckman in Todd Goldstein as well. So I went and looked about how he did against North Melbourne the last time he played Todd Goldstein. History... Not as great as you'd hope. Last year when Goldie was on a little bit, 139. Does fill you with a bit more confidence. So, yeah, I can say another big one for Ingles. But this is where the conundrum comes in, horsey boy. This is a Friday night game. Who are we chucking the VC on? Tingles or Bontempelli? If I had him, I'd go Libertoro. Oh, I love that. Because we... Fucking suck inside. <laughs> Setterfield's out with a knee. And when you look at the likes of who we're going to have running through there, Merritt? Durham. Parrish. Parrish. Durham will probably play on a wing. Is he back? He is back this week. He is back, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. We might play Zardis through the middle. Oh, God. Perkin- oh, Libba's Perkins going to. Oh. Perkins is out. Yeah, oh, that's Libba. Friday night eats for, Dur- uh, for Libba. Oh. Fuck. Libba's just going to be an all-you-can-eat buffet, mate, and he's going to go huge. Um, yep. So my, my pick for uh, VC this week, <laughs> if I had him, would be Liberatore. Uh, his last three games against Essendon, though, aren't that appealing. He averages 98 even after, like, last week he oh. got his 155. This could be an absolute pizzling, though. Um, we did skip over one player, though, the player that you defeated in under-14's premiership that right. I will continue to bring up every podcast that we talk about the Western Bulldogs yep. and Marcus Bontempelli, average yep. of 128, break even of 147. He's an elite super coach player and ball right. user. He gets points for breathing, and we yep. love that. If you don't have him, that's your fault. Yep, 100%, mate. Uh, Choke, uh, welcome to you, mate, and we apologize for starting the uh, stream without you. Very, very sorry, mate. Deadly, I saw what you did as well. That was hilarious. Well played. I really, really like that. Um, but let's talk about Sam Darcy, mate. This is where I want to go to because I don't like what he's doing to English for one, but God, he's looking good when he's on the field. He just seems to be able to find a knack for the ball wherever he is. They're still playing him a bit of ruck, defense, and forward. How are you able to kick three goals when you only played, a, I think it was 35% of the game forward was outrageous for him. That's fantastic by him. Um, so he's got a. Um, 88 Supercoach points from 55% time on ground last week. Um, don't really like Bevo's effect, but, you know, we're going to have to roll with that because it's Bevo. Um, still looks good, and he's got a break even of minus 21. Love that. Now, let's talk Zinger and not okay. what you're having for dinner. <laughs> Riley Sanders. I haven't had one for a few days. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Average of 75, three-round average of 85, break-even of eight this week. Yes, Currently priced at 292K. 
You're holding him. Yeah, I'm holding him. I think his potential is very, very nice. If he was in any other side, I'd feel so good about holding him for so much longer. But the fact that he's in the dogs, like, it kind of hurts. Yeah, it does. Mm. Uh, Jason Johannesson, average of 84 after his stinker of 41 last week, break even of 106 and priced at 440. Sell. Yep, thank God Justin's not here, but that's all right. I still got three weeks in, baby. Lockie Bramble, average of 80.3 after his 31 last week really hurts, but he'd been playing really good football before that. He's got a break even of 73, priced at 290, uh, sorry, 354K now after upgrades. Yeah, I'm, I'm still holding at the moment, but like I can see the need to sell. I don't know how much more coin yeah. he's going to make. And Harley Gallagher, sorry, Harvey, Harvey. Gallagher. Yeah, uh, I've had a couple of wines. All right, mate. Come on, get off of it. Um, two hundred and seven. <laughs> your your dad, far out. Um, two hundred and seven k forward. Break even to minus seventeen. What do you reckon, horse? I reckon he looks all right. Yeah, I think he does too. He he fits he fits a, a need that the Western Bulldogs need. And as we can see on the screen there, nothing too appealing apart from smacking the pants off West Coast with an eighty nine, but forty nine, thirty nine, forty six. Outside of the 89, it's probably a fade. Yeah. But um, I think the Western Bulldogs got themselves a really nice player there. Couldn't agree more. The The role that he has isn't enough to be explosive enough for me for Supercoach. No, no. Yep. Do you want to talk about Essendon or do you want me to talk about Essendon? Actually, I'm going to start it off real quick because there's one player that I really, really like from Essendon, and it's this man, Zach Merritt. Um, God, he is bloody good. And... You guys would be so absolutely stuffed if you didn't have him and his leadership as captain. Mm -hmm. um, he has an average of 131.5, break even of 115, price at 668K. Uber primo at the moment. And I am pretty comfortable in saying I believe he will be a top eight mid this season because he is carrying the absolute ass off the Essendon Football Club right now. He has yep. stuff all help. And they need him badly but let's yeah. talk about one of your men darcy parish horse yeah i've got darcy parish here so i did actually write any notes up on him but i want the community to know that he has historically been a bit of a super coach pig and mm. average has averaged close to 120 in seasons gone by as indicated by his 604k price tag his break even is 193 this week he's due if he gets 92 he's going to drop 46k mm-hmm as we can see here in the past, 109, 111, 96, 126, 121, 107, 110, 133. The bloke knows how to score large. So the fact that he's gone 80 and 72 so far, I want the community to keep tabs on this guy because he's he's going to turn it around at some stage. That's just the player he is. He's come off a hamstring. It's taken him a couple of weeks to get going. I feel like this week he probably gets to 100, but he's, he's still going to drop that 46, 47K. Darcy Parrish at 550 or even the week after if he's got another 140 break even. Darcy Parrish at 540 or 530K. That's super, super appealing and probably on par with a Clayton Oliver at 500K. Yep, horse could not agree with you more, except for the fact where you said he'll probably get 100. I do not think he'll get 100. How is he meant to get 100 being an outside mid when they're not going to get the first touch of the ball because they're worse in the ruck and they're worse on the inside midfield? And if you're going to tell me, oh, maybe Parrish can go inside and be the inside midfielder, that's even worse. Libba will eat him. Yep. So next week, though, I'm all for getting Parrish into my team. Yep. yep. Uh, for those of you that are looking on, you can see that I've brought up Nick Martin, 533K. He has a break even of 35, projected to go up 35K. So he'll end up at around 570K before... DPP comes in at the end of next round. As we can yeah. see, he started off with a 63. People were hating on that. He started to come good against Sydney, 93, and then he's gone boom, boom, 136, 133. He's smacking the pants off or taking the piss out of Super Coach. He's not very good when it comes to being a damaging forward, so to speak, or a damaging kick inside forward 50. But when we're talking about Super Coach related um, points and how he accumulates points across half back, it's a very attractive buy, mate. Yeah. No, I agree, mate. I wish I hold, held his ass, but uh, unfortunately, uh, mm -hmm. I did not. But that's all right. We'll try and figure out other ways, mate. Um, Andy McGrath, he's got the average of 101.3 for the year so far. Had yep. a down game on the weekend. But, yeah, 
I yeah, too too risky for me, mate. But Dersma's showing a little bit now. What do you reckon of him? I'm I'm personally wingers at that price are a little bit iffy for me. But mm-hmm. I'd like to hear what you think. Is there anything else that Dersma is doing to stand above the crowd? Supercoach related? Yes. No. Okay, right. Great. No. <laughs> As an Essendon supporter, I like that we've got him. And so far, he's probably been the pick of our recruits. But from a Supercoach point of view... You when know you're I'm talking... Ben Mackay. Beg your pardon? You don't like Ben Mackay? You're not rating oh, Ben Mackay? He's, no, he's, he's been good as a stopper. I think he's been good. Yeah. Can you see why we're paying him $1.76 billion a year? Nah. Neither. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, before we get on to our games on Saturday, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, be a triple banger, please. Put the thumbs up down below. The more thumbs up that we get, it helps us expand what we're doing as we speak and help keep giving you the best premium content we can. On Saturday, we have four games. (laughs) Kicking off. With GWS taking on St Kilda at Monica Oval. Hang on a um, second, horse. Yep. Just got to quickly go back to the chat because we love reading through some of you absolute degens um, comments through here. Um, <laughs> I loved Kisses, said he hopes Gaff plays because he's a shoe in for Cone of the Week. <laughs> love that. Um, just <laughs> um, deadly. Yes, it is 100% legal. You are allowed to do that. I just found it very funny. Um, Kizza, uh, so Skitty is the reason Bond is great. Yes, basically. I gave him that touch-up and that tune-up that he needed, and he did not turn back after that. So, yep, you that, could not be any more right there, Im- mate. Imagine if Bond had have beaten you in that under-14s grand final. He might not be the player he is today. Yeah, he could have got too big of a head, even though he's the most calm, level-headed, one of the best mm-hmm. blokes ever. Um, but... Yes, there, there is a genuine chance of that, mate. Um, yeah. But, yeah, love all you guys commenting. You're an absolute guy. Some of you guys are funny buggers. You should really do stand-up comedy. Um, let's go on to the Giants and the Saints. <laughs> yes, please. So, Tommy no, Green, mate. It's, it's 100% legal. Don't you, don't you dare go back on yourself now, mate. I saw it, so it's legal. <laughs> uh, average of 132 for Tom Green. Break even of 134. Bloke is a contested bull. Score didn't reflect how good he was on the weekend. But that's okay. Lucky, lucky weekend. Lucky weekend. Fuck me. Lucky weekend. Lucky weekend. <laughs> yeah, he, he's Mr. Weekend now. Average of 110. Yeah. Uh, Hamo, he's averaging more than 90, FYI. Whitfield survived a HIA in the first quarter to come back on and score 87, which we're all relieved about, which was a good score considering no one really went large in this game. Still in only 11% of teams. Jesse Hogan. Average of 107 yeah. this year. Really nice by Hogan so far this year. St. Kilda love to stack their back line with extra defenders, yeah. though. So he may find it hard this weekend to score well. Previous scores of 75 and 59 against the, state, the Sainters. Yeah. Um, Toby Green Dougal, did in. What's Dougal that? does match up very, very nicely on um, Jesse Hogan. He has done it for numerous amounts of years. He, anywhere Hogan's been, if he's been at Freo, if he's been at Melbourne. So, yeah, mate, that's... It's time for me to go. In fairness, for me, if it's um, if you've got Jesse Hogan, Toby Green, did he? Oh, did he get a week? I love. Wait, what's that? Sorry, did he get a week for that sling tackle, or did he get off? I didn't hear shit about it, so I don't even think he got. I don't. I don't think he got a week for it. But I'm gonna have to double check that now for you, mate. But um, if Toby's, I, I actually don't know, but. It, you know, God, he looks buddy. He looks buddy good. And I'm just mm. sorry. I'm just something's caught my eye. Ian's just Ian Johnson. <laughs> he's just said, if Bond got the win, you would be in his position and he would be in yours position. Not a goddamn chance, mate. Because my footballing ability died when all my shoulders got stuffed up, and I'm funnier than Bond, so I can still claim that. So that's all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> Seven Canelio, um, Coggers, average of 107. 107 for Cog. He's been so under the goddamn radar, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't think it's purely because I just don't think he can get into the top eight mids this year. But that's right. If he if he had fought again like last year, oh my god, we'd be eating him alive. He does have an average of 100 against the Saints in his past three. But we've got a big one here. This is Kieran Briggs. We're about to be talking about now. Stinker last week against the Suns. Mm-hmm. He has an average of 95 so far this year. Mm-hmm. Been very underwhelming. Mm-hmm. 
needs to lift to reward the coaches that drafted him. He did score 109 against the Saints last year. Yep. I'm pretty certain that Marshall was had an injury scare or he had a HIA or something like that for a time, and then he went big for a certain part of it, but Marshall owned him for the majority of that game. But in saying that, Ross Lyon has come out and said Marshall may be rested to some degree because they have big Campbell. Uh, I don't know if that means Marshall resting a bit more forward, Marshall, yep. you know, having a bit more time on the bench. Cam- Cause Mar- Campbell can't really do stuff all else. Marshall might not even play. Yeah. Well, that would be an absolute shit up, but surely yeah. not. You would I reckon if they, not- if they won last week, I reckon there's a chance. Wait, no, they did win last week. Sorry, what the hell am I on? Um, yeah, maybe there is a chance, actually. Maybe there is a chance that he can't choke us. Just go squeeze of the week, Dom Young minus 15. Love that. <laughs> That's a good NRL reference. But wrong show. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, who else have we got as well? So we got uh, Harvey Thomas. Okay, now. Had a couple of people say, ask me about Harvey Thomas. He was subbed off early last week, killing any form of big cash gen. He still has a break even of minus seven. Mm-hmm. Now, I would be worried if I have Harvey Thomas, but I'm not worried this week. This is future use problem. He yeah. still has a negative break even. There's mm-hmm. all, there's surely other people that have um, that can be traded out of your team that do not yep. have a minus break even that can absolutely. Generate cash. This is, yeah, someone that can stay in the team for sure. Mm-hmm. And Aaron Cabin. Yes. He's still got a Absolutely. minus three break even as well. If he scores 53, he's going to make another 25K this week. 25K on top of that, 265-ish, straight into Coombin next week. I expect him to go mm-hmm. large again this week. Yep, I could say that. I do worry a little bit about the Saints defense, but that's all right. Ian Johnson was two, three, four, zero last week. A good score. Yes, mate. That's a pretty bloody good score if you're a hundred well top score. Yep. Well, bloody done. Deadly, don't you dare pick up Briggsy. Um, I'm not having that. And he's got Briggs hundred. Mate, Deadly, I'm gonna lose track because I've had a couple of wines, all right. I'm gonna take your shittest score from the three people you've already put down for squeeze of the week, all right, mate. <laughs> But All right, we're going to St fun. Kilda. <laughs> it's still funny. Keep them coming through. <laughs> we're going to we're going to St Kilda, and I see that yep. uh, Legend Twenty Four has put something in there about steel. Yes. Uh, good time to bring up your point on steel, mate. Average of one hundred and twenty-seven so far to start the year, which would place him in the top eight Super Coach players so far this year. He's had a very good start to the year, break even of sixty-nine. So he's he's likely to make more bank, mate. Um, yeah, mate. I'll just I'm going to look up his details because he's priced at 500 and basically 90k now he's gone up 60k already he's projected to score 126 this week Mm -hmm. if he does he makes another 26.3 which means he's 615k next week and starting to almost get out of range mate if you have the ability to bring him in this week bring him in yep i think he also does enjoy playing against the Giants as well from memory. His, uh, his old or, team. Yep. Yep, exactly right. A couple of revenge games. I actually think I have written it down. I've just got to have a little bit of scroll. Give me a second. Um, Steel, yeah, 135 and 140 in his last two against GWS. So mm-hmm. he does like playing against his old team. Yeah. Unfortunately, if you don't have him, uh, that's just one that you're going to have to do and get him in um, in any way that you can. All right, boys. It's time. Let's start swinging. It's time to talk about the big wang, boys. Let's go. <laughs> time to start swinging. Nasai Wanganee Miller, average of 106.5 this year. Looks very solid again after the weekend. He's got a break even of 88. He's still sharing the kick out uh, duties with Sinclair and the boner. Um, yeah, horse, if you don't have him, are you bringing him in? I don't have him. And I'm not bringing him in. Interesting. No Wang. Everyone no, no has wang. no Wang. I have <laughs> a inside peni. It goes inverted. I do not have a Wang. 
So I'm nice sorry, week. I've got oh, I've got the boner. <laughs> oh, he's got the boner. All right, let's talk about the boner then. <laughs> Average of 86 to start this year. He's got a fantastic super coach game from him, but from an AFL level, he's pretty ordinary. Break even of nine this week. <laughs> he, he could make really nice cash this week. I'll um I'll bring yeah. him up for the ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages that are watching at home. Oh he my could God, make he did it. 35k this week if he scores 86. For example, if he if he scores 100, 110 and makes 50k, he's 400k. If you've got Boney, you could nearly use him and then trade off a rookie that you've had from the start of the year and get gone in a couple of weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Like it, it's in prime position. It the thing is, I think the I think the boner's time is about to run out. I think it's almost about to be flaccid, purely because I can't see how him, the Wang, and Sinclair all can score well in the one team. Like mm-hmm. you don't see three players in one back line being able to score huge every single week unless they're playing Hawthorne's bullshit style of kick to kick. Kizza, <laughs> the boner is not in prime position. I don't care what you say, even though that would be good. Um, yeah, uh, I I think it's I, – I like how he goes this week, but it's not someone that I'm going to be bringing in for the long term, I don't believe. Okay. Uh, do you want to talk about – Jack Sinclair, mate. Um, I'm just yep. going to try and find his heat map so we can show the people at home. It's everywhere. I'll give you the spoiler. It is ev- Jack Sinclair from last week was everywhere on the ground. But um, yeah, Sinclair, he has an average of 97. Um, he's looking pretty bloody good after his 124 last week. Um, he used the ball well. Saints are looking to get the, uh, the ball in his hands as well. So I think we can definitely be looking at him, especially he's got there a break even to one fifteen. There it is, there, ladies and gentlemen. So I'll just zoom in a little bit for you. Is that last week? Thanks against the yep, Tigs. Th- thanks yeah, to the guys. That. That's that's a bit of a sideways wang that we've got going on there. But as you can see, he's got little uh, polka dots all over the place. He finds the ball everywhere. Um, he starts sort of at the top of the D fifty and works his way <laughs> from wing to wing almost. So he's definitely a little bit further up the ground, which. I don't know whether you can see my mouse at all, but it allows uh, the Wang and the Boner to work really well inside D50 together. I'll see if oh, I can find... God. Um, what, what's wrong? I, I can't believe that we have three <laughs> penis jokes from the one back line. <laughs> this is unbelievable. The flaccid... Oh. I'll the see flaccid if... Sinclair Wang, the Wang <laughs> and the Boner, all in the one back line. You know what? I take back what I said. They can all work together. Bugger it. I, I um I can't believe he's got a sideways boner going on there. I love that. Look at that. Uh, uh, I'm not going to go into deep detail, but you guys can all see what I'm. You can pick up what I'm putting down. I'm just I'm going to bring up boners one, just while we're okay. quickly having a well, look. Well, then here. I'll quickly talk about Rowan Marshall because yeah, Rowan you do Marshall that. Have an average of one fifteen. Uh, back to his best last weekend. It was a fantastic. Um, come back, he uh, scored 100 in the second quarter, in the second half, sorry. Um, he could be a good cash grab, if not for Gorn. Yes, Ross Lyons' uh, comments do worry me um, a little bit, just how he may be rested or how he it could be subbed, this kind of, this kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to jump into a couple of these, uh, a couple of these chats. One, no, I've got it. Before you... no, I've, got okay, it. Go. I've got it. So this is uh, boners here. Yep. So this is this is his heat map, mm-hmm. and as you can see, it's, the boners got a bit of a sore to the top left hand side of the uh, D50. So he likes to work the flanks yep. and doesn't use the middle of the ground. So it almost looks as though St Kilda look to use him when they're looking to go long, and there's not really much across deep D50. So mm-hmm. all those blue dots are where he gets the ball, not where he kicks the ball to. Yes, correct. I, uh, I really like that, mate. So they, and then Wang's, I believe, is a bit more up the ground and more to the right-hand side of the field as well. So um, that's our uh, St. Kilda obviously running their back line. But also, too, there was stuff all kickouts from Richmond's perspective because Saints didn't only kicked one goal up until half time and Richmond were only 25 at half time. So there was a lot more running around. Horse, 
I'm going to get to our beautiful comment section as well before we get into the next game of yeah, Adelaide go getting shit on by Carlton. Um, sorry, Hamo. Um, <laughs> skits. He's got. <laughs> they've got the steel, the wang, and the boner. I love that. Chokata, surely the wang, uh, the boner, and the wang should be traded to the pies because they're a bunch of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, Deadly's going to have a steel wang this <laughs> this week. A lot of comments about how Sinclair's <laughs> heat map is a flaccid cock. Matrix can get fucked. Um, he said up the baggers. Whoa. I still don't think he knows what it means. Um, what? And then he, I've I've heard him after twenty beers at the Gold Coast Casino yell that at the top of his voice. Yeah, and no he, one know what he's talking about. He loves the baggers from someone that's from Brisbane. He has no idea what he's um, yeah. saying about. Um, and then he also said this podcast is a sausage fest and the NRL hosts are mature, which I know is absolute bullshit. That's but we bullshit. still love the NRL boys. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, love, absolutely love that. Um, <laughs> I just love that deadly call the same kind of backline, the whole package. <laughs> Three and then we've got Choke package. Artist at the bottom. He can't wait for Mason Wood to come back. Oh. To join. I can't wait too. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, Hamo, close your ears, mate, um, because Carlton are going to be versing the Adelaide Crom at Marvel Stadium this week. Massive right. game for Adelaide this week, uh, Horse. Yeah, it is. So for Adelaide, Jordan Dawson, average of 86.3 so far this year and has lost owners 91K so far, break even of 151 and will lose more cash this week. If you've held him, you, you can't sell him now. You've just got to hold because I feel like there is a score coming for Jordan Dawson in the next coming weeks. If he scores 97, he's still going to lose 25K this week which means Jordan Dawson at 540. That's Darcy Parrish at 550, Clayton Oliver 500. There's three primos there that if you've saved your pennies, there's some really good players that are going to turn it around at some stage. Yep. As we can see here, 82, 96, 68, 99 so far. I feel like the 99 is a bit of a turning point for him. He was starting to find a little bit more of the ball last week. And that was because Matt Crouch was not in the midfield and Saligo works so much better in there. And they look so much better and so much more attacking without the peanut himself, the couch potato, <laughs> Matt Crouch. 29 touches for 83 metres gained last week, Skiddy. Mm. Yep, absolutely, mate. Uh, shocking, mate. He he has an average of 112. Could not give a stuff in the slightest. He hurts Adelaide more than he does any good. He has a break even of 111. If you have him, that's cool. But no thanks. Also, too, I do like the cash potato as his nickname. Rory Laird, 118 average. He's got a break even of 136. If you have him, you just keep holding. It's not time to bring him in if you don't have him, though. How about the Minge? Minge's hinge. Yep, Minge's hinge. Average of 98 so far this year. Pretty underrated player and he's hard as nails at the pill. I know he's one of Hambo's favourite players. Break even of 81. Takes on average 25% of the kickouts too. I think he's one for probably next year. He's just starting to warm into AFL footy. And to be honest with you, he's probably in the top three of my favourite players at Adelaide as well. You watch the way he attacks the pill. He is hard as a nut. Uh, Jake Sligo, I like this guy. He only averages yeah. 70 so far this year, but... He's been sub a couple of times, 128 last week. If Crouch ever gets dropped and he's the inside mid, he is a definite play. I don't mm -hmm. care how much his price is. If it's less than 400K, you're jumping on him if Crouch isn't playing. Yep, absolutely, mate. He looks uh, really, really good as that inside role for the Crom, so I really like that. Um, let's talk about Carlton, though. Harry, okay. Okay. Uh, 493k. He has an average of 113 right now. Um, break even of 70. Started the year off really, really well. Um, feel the price cap will be coming in a couple of weeks, but for now you hold with that break even. He should be able to shift that in. Um, Charlie Kerno, 335k. He has an average of 82 at the moment. Break even of 88. Um, he could go large here. I think Hamo would be okay with me saying that. Adelaide's defense is uh, Adelaide's defense is kind of underwhelming at the moment. Um, don't know. I believe I think Adelaide drafted a key defender that would be really, really good right now. From WA. Oh, I just can't remember his name. Curtin. Curtin. Oh, 
Maybe if they brought in Dan Curtin, that'd be fantastic. But no, they're idiots. Um, deadly over under um, 0.5 crouch meters gained. I'll take zero. I'll take pretty unders. comfortably. Yep. <laughs> Worries there. What are you doing with Cripper though, horse? Crips chips. Average of 105 with a break even of 118. Price at 558. No. Too inconsistent. No. Um, Jack Jack Carroll, if you've got him, awesome. Average of 67.5, break even of one, making good coin for owners that have him. He's made 107K so far. Do not sell him yet. He's going to make some good coin for you still. George Hewitt, 481K, average of 102 so far. So he's been pretty good for the Blues so far this year. But Sam Walsh may be back. So there's some news this week that he's been training well. And if he gets through tonight's training run, it's probably already out now. We haven't seen anything. But if Sam Walsh gets through, he will be in, which will throw everything out of whack for Carlton. And then Zach Williams. There were reports. I want to address this, mate, because uh, he's got an average of 89, break even of seven this week. People are talking about, oh, he's got ice on his hamstring. He's in for scans, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. When you play footy... At the end of a game, do you not – like, you've, you've had fucked shoulders before, mate. Do you not ice your shoulders straight after a game? Every single game that I played. <laughs> mate, I, I did a uh, hamstring tendon injury and went back to playing footy the next year. And uh, every game after that that I played, I iced my hamstring, regardless of whether it was sore or not, to aid the recovery process. So just so you – just because you see someone with ice on a shoulder, on a – a hamstring, on a calf, on an ankle, it doesn't mean they're sore. It just means that they're assisting their body in the recovery process. They do ice baths. They go for a dip in the bloody, in the bay in Melbourne, wherever it might be in Adelaide, uh, wherever it is in Perth that they go to. It's, yeah, so don't, if you see it on X, don't read too much into it. If you see it on social media, don't read too much into it. He has not come up on any injury reports and some people will just say it for the clickbait, but we're yep. here to give you the non-bullshit responses, and that is he will play this week. He is managing an ACL, and you know what? It's just part of his recovery process that he gets ice on the hamstrings at the end of every game. So if yep. anyone's telling you to trade, don't. Yep. The other person that applies to Sylvie's on the money with um, Jason Horn Francis. Then, yep. then it's red flags, big-time red flags. But his um, dad still kisses him on the lips, so. He no, 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 no. He doesn't kiss him on the lips because he's a disappointment. Um, okay. <laughs> Hamo, you are right. He's not a key defender. Um, I do apologize. He played key defender in his um, uh, thingo role that I'm talking about, uh, Dan Curtin, obviously. Um, but, yeah, uh, they need someone down there at least to be able to do something. I'm sick of hearing about this keen bloke that I'm not keen on. Horse, what about... If the Inside World Cup. Let's talk oh, a bit of I thought you'd never ask. So <laughs> the Insight World Cup is brought to you by the guys at the Insight Fantasy Sports. If you ever thought you were a elite super coach, well, now you can prove it with our year-round fantasy super coach World Cup featuring all four super coach sports in NRL, AFL, NBL, and BBL. It's $20 to enter before the buy rounds of the AFL season, which I think is round 12 off the yep. top of my head. Uh, and then entries will be closed because we don't want people taking advantage of, oh, they're high in the rankings, I'm going to enter now. So that's cut off. Your rankings yep. will be calculated together with all of the other sports, and the best performer over the four sports combined will take out the best super coach player in the world. Join our Discord to find out more and register, which will be in the link below or in the description below, sorry. On Saturday night, we have a double header, mate. So we get to choose bang, which bang. game we want to watch. Uh, our first game is Gold Coast versus Hawthorne on the Gold Coast. Um, so, I'll let you start by talking about the diddly. Oh, the diddly Sam Flanders. I'm so glad that this gets to be a nickname. Yep, the diddly average of 120. Um, bloody stupid sexy Flanders, man. Break even of 90. Looks to be a top six forward now. This halfback role that he has is now sensational for him. He's kicking is much improved. Yeah, I really like being able to get um, Sam yeah. Flanders in if you can. Horse. Marrow, 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 Matthew Rowell averages 130. <laughs> He's got a break even of 126, though. Really nice role as the inside mid for Gold Coast. 
he will be a top eight mid, I reckon, by year's end. And for I don't like cheese in the chat, he's finally caught alive with us. Lovely to have you, brother. Um, you're not too late. We're only getting started. <laughs> I really um, don't like cheese. <laughs> it's a great name. I hope um, that is a uh, reference to Jake Stringer because if it is, then that's extra points for you, mate. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's actually yeah. a good point. String of cheese. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Took Miller. Fuck took, him. took, took. Average of 114. Oh, took, took. Break even of 127 this week. So he may lose money this week. He only averages 100 against Hawthorne. And you know who averages less against Hawthorne? I think you're talking about Noah Anderson. I am. He's got mm. an average of 109.5 this year. He has a break even of 146. And Hawthorne is one of the worst teams he plays against. For him, statistically wise... Only averages 90. Yeah, absolutely. But also, too, that's old Hawthorne. New Hawthorne are actually one of the best teams to play if you have Supercoach mid this mm -hmm. season. So, I don't know, does that top and tail in between Jai Newcomb playing like absolute dog shit besides last week? I don't know. You tell me. Let's talk about every what everyone wants to talk about or one of the blokes that everyone wants to talk about. Sam Closey. Wow. 102k defender. Thank you, Damien Hardwick, for giving us an absolute gem. 106 last week. Really impressed with the ability that he has to run from the half back all the way up the wing to half forward from contest to contest. He put last week horse was something that I like you'd see from like an experienced veteran. Mm -hmm. He was just owning that side of the ground. And the thing that really impressed me most is he really entrusts his kicking, but mm -hmm. also to he was not scared to be able to take the middle of the ground as a defensive role when needed. He came off his opponent at the right time, and he just went for it. Really liked it. And the best thing, he did it against probably the best team at the moment. Yep. yep. On a I ground agree. where the wind was a bit blowy, and he was still taking the game on. Yep. Um, now, don't expect, he's, don't expect yeah. 180 out of him every game. <laughs> yeah. But... I feel comfortable with what I saw to expect 70. I, I could 100% expect 70. I, I feel like that's comfortable. Um, yeah, so I really like the role. But Will Graham, what do you think of him? I, I wasn't as Loved him. wowing. Loved him. Yeah, it wasn't as wowing as Closey, but still very nice. Loved him. And for the reason being that he had 68% time on ground. Yep. 49% center bounce attendances for the game. Very interesting. Very interesting. So Hardwick's just gone, I'm going to trust this bloke right from the start. Let's get him in. I'm going to try you and know, find his... I was about to say, Horse, you know, but that goes hand in hand, hand in hand with that is the fact that um, Flanders got less CBAs and purely played that. Um, half back role while Sexton was out of the um out of the team. Yeah, I don't think Sexton comes back after what they showed on the weekend, mate. That was probably what I know they lost, but shit, they looked really bloody good for a large portion of that game. Like Can I, they um, looked very in control. I want to show you something. I've actually found his heat map, and it's not quite a, it's not quite another Wang. Oh, well, then so why this are we is showing it? this is Will Graham from last week. As we can see, he's basically just controlling the mid to wing area on the right hand side of the ground, and getting plenty of the pill in those areas. So, I like it. There's a lot to like about that. Yeah, not quite a wang, but I'm still impressed with it. It's uh, it's very mid heavy, isn't it, for someone that mm -hmm. did actually play a bit of backline on the weekend. Um, so yeah. I, uh, hey, I, I see, mind. I see Hamo in the uh, comments there. Um, his big knock is his endurance, even through juniors. Sixty nine percent time mm -hmm. on ground is scary. It's yep. scary, mate. Sam Darcy's getting fifty five percent time on ground, and mm -hmm. still scoring well. So if he's that rotational piece and and doing his bit while he's on, he's one hundred and seventeen k rookie. We just need him to make us two hundred k, you know, two hundred and fifty k, and he's done his job. So I actually I, quite like it. I, I like it too. I, I am, like, in fairness, though, I am worried about the sub risk, but I think it's a bloody good sub risk to be able to have. It's it's a, like, you know, 
when you're looking at someone like Harvey Thomas, who's already made us like 90K, I'd feel more confident with having him, uh, with having Graham rather than Harvey Thomas. But let's talk Hawthorne and because I know there's a big, big glaring, um, big glaring thing that someone wants me to talk about. And I know that um, PW has been asking a few times. PW, we are getting to it in a very short second. Let's talk about James Sisley for Hawthorne. Um, average of 95, break even of 144. He's dropped 60K, so uh, 64K so far. He have an, he has an average of 125 in his last two against the Suns. Are you thinking this is the week, or are you still giving a little bit horse if you were to be looking at Sis? No. Projected score of 102. Looks like, like he's going to drop another 20K. I think, again, without that big back to help him out down there. Yeah. He struggled this year. Mm-hmm. What's he scored? Oh, yeah. uh, 43, 123, 89, 95. That's not something you want out of a top six defender. And this is not the sis that we have come no. to expect as well, especially when they've been losing every game yep. too. You'd, we'd be hoping for more than that. But 100%. same as that we were thinking about this, like Massimo D'Ambrosio, the role has changed from the rebounding defender. He's more of a wingman now, which is bloody annoying. He's I'll still averaging 85. Feet, Thank you very much. He's still averaging 85. He has a break even of 49. Once DPP's come in, it might be time to move him. I think we could do it. We could almost do it maybe, I wouldn't say this round, the break even of 49 is still okay, so we could still net a little bit. There's probably other players that could be able to do, but if you really do need to move someone, Massimo could be the chance that you do. I'm sorry, Horse. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I, I said his name and I didn't allow you to do it because obviously you're the Italian. Please. Who are we talking about? Massimo Di Ambrosio. Oh, yes, yes. I've asked him all. Um, yeah. So this, so this is his heat map from last week. So we can see there that it's very yep. wing dominated, whether it be the top testicle or the lower testicle. It's really mm-hmm. just wing central. Whereas if we go back. Trav, I do see what you're saying is that the role hasn't changed and he's been playing wing all season. He actually hasn't. He played half back in the first game where he scored 108. Hence why everyone was still like all over him. But since then, he has then gone more of a winger kind of like kind of pushing back yeah, as, kind of role. As we can see here, this is his round one against Essendon yeah. where he's pushing very much more deep forward, back, across the back line there. He was pretty much everywhere. Uh, I'll see if I can find. So he I, went at 1.2 points per minute in round one. Yeah. I the think it's Josh Weddle. The last two weeks, he's gone at 0.7 points per minute. I think Josh Weddle's been the person that's kind of like made him go back because they just really value his speed and his ability to be able to break through and everything like that. But also, too, John Newcomb, lot lot better last week. He had 110 last week, been uh, to the season average of 81. I just want to show you this as well, mate. This is uh, the week before round three. Yeah. For Massimo D'Ambrosio. So very wing. Heavy. Yeah. 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 Anyway, continue He's on, brother. Fine. Sorry. Um, Nuke. So he has a break even of 87 this week, priced at 800, uh, sorry, 487K. This probably will be as cheap as we can get him. It just depends if you really do believe that he can be that primo for the rest of the year. When in the first three rounds, we've seen Warp will be the guy. And then, um, yeah, and then now Newcomb stepped up one as well. So um, don't know about that one. But that brings us into James Warple. What do you reckon, horsey boy? No. Nah. No. Nah. No. Nah. Sorry. I'll just keep it nice and short, mate. Um, Newcomb kind of looks back at the moment. It's it's Hawthorne. They're sort of up and down all over the place. And for if you're going to pay up for that sort of player, you want someone to be consistent. And what did he score last week? I don't think it was very good. No, shit ass because Newcomb scored better. I think he yep. only scored like it's 80 odd. Yeah. So Something it would like be that. for that reason that. All right. Yeah, I'm not touching him. All right. Stuff him off. Everyone's been waiting long enough, mate. Talk to us about Leaky, about Meeky boy. I kind of don't want to because I'm going to fade him this week. Oh. But, 
Yeah, Lloyd Meek. So he's been pretty good to start there, hasn't he, mate? Yeah, mate. Okay, look. So I'll talk about him then because I am someone that is not fading him and I am actually bringing him in this week. Wow. Grundy to so Meek. He... I will show you this. Yep. Okay. So Lloyd Ruckman. Yep. Yep. Go, go, go. Sorry. Okay. Lone Ruckman, he scored 112 and 100. Uh, sorry. Yeah, 112 and 104 last two games as a lone Ruckman. He has scored 88 and 130 as a break even of minus 14. He has Gold Coast, North, and Sydney in the next three. He's on the bubble, and in his two games, he's played Geelong and Collingwood. He has the same points per minute as Max Gorn does this year. He's tied third behind Marshall and Nank for Ruckman. Now, I'm going down from Grundy to him this week, but this is a massive but. If Reeves is named, bail the fuck out. There is no way I'm bringing him in if Reeves is named. But if it's just me, yes, I'm in. Why? I think he can purely make 100K in the next two weeks so I can get to Gorn after that. That is exactly why I'm doing it. PW, yep, go the Sharks, mate. Love the fact that you brought up the East Frio boys in there. As we can see on the screen here, I brought up his two games in 2024 where he's got uh, 16 touches against Geelong and 18 touches against Collingwood. Against Geelong, he went at 0.79 points per minute. And against Collingwood, he went at 1.22 points per minute. Yep. So I'm, I'm going to bring up both heat, map, heat maps. So as we can see here, he's very central in the game. Oh, sorry. I need to change the screen. I don't know what don't the I? hell. Yeah, I don't sorry. know what the fuck you're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've, I've brought it up, but here we go. Yeah. So as we can see here, he's very central with what he's doing. Mm -hmm. This is the game against Geelong in the wet the week yes. before. So I'll just quickly bring up. Sorry to keep you well, waiting at home, uh, but te technology is not my strong point. This is another thing I want to bring up about Meek, though. Like, I would not be bringing him in if I did not see the eye test from him, right? Yep. In that last week against Collingwood, he was getting down. He was able to handball. In prior years, he looked like an absolute goddamn statue, right? But last week, he was getting down. He was getting the grand ball handballs out to Newcomb, out to Warple. They also, too, when the ball uh, was kicked out onto the half um, half back line or the wing, and he would contest it, they were happy enough to let him be the link-up man with a handball or even trusting him with a kick. That's wow. something that not many Ruckmen are um, able to do and also entrusted to do. But it looks like Hawthorne are able to do this. I, I, Travis, I do agree. I know Collingwood do struggle against Rucks. Jared Witts this year is not doing that well against Rucks besides Kieran Briggs last week. That's the only time he's had the upper hand in a Ruck contest. And then the week after, he has Tristan Zeri, who gives up 101 average Supercoach points to Ruckman. I need him for Good. two weeks. Good stats. This is the only time that I – this is the only reason why I'm bringing him in is because I need him just to get me at least 80K in these next two weeks to be able to get gone. And that is the only reason why. Other than that, no. <laughs> so as we can see on the screen here, this is his heat map from last week, which is – very, very central related. Didn't move far from the center square. As Squiddy, Skiddy was just indicating. Squiddy. That, Squiddy. Maybe <laughs> on the blind one. <clears throat> but um, Squid. as we can see there, they were happy to go through him through the middle of the ground by the looks. And he was definitely conserving his energy because he went fuck all out of the square, did he? Mm -hmm. um, now what I'll he's got to get there. Some, he's got to get there somehow, though, horse. So obviously he's running down there. But the so only other person that yeah. they were running through the ruck was um, Max Ram, big Rax, Max Ram. And the Ram. Yeah. I still think like what they did uh, with Meek was able to be doing it. I really don't like cheese. Look, I, I see what you're saying. Oh God, please stop. You might be talking me into Meek. Let me preface this again. Okay. You've got stats only... on the screen to back it up too, if you like, mate. Yeah, absolutely. I am only bringing in Meek. Because I am trying to get to Gorn. He has a minus 14 break even. They reckon he's going to get 80, which can get him 34K. I reckon he can do a little bit better than that. 
And then the week after against Zeri, I think you can do better that. I just don't want Grundy sitting there doing stuff all, not making me cash, because I want to get to Gorn after his buy. That mm-hmm. is purely it. Um, Ian Johnson, I'm going a mixed combo, mate, with Gallic sauce. So oh, I'm no lamb. More. I'm lamb every single day of the week, brother. I don't want chicken uh, on there. I think lamb's as, just too elite. As a man that had a family that owned kebab shops for a number of years, <laughs> I'm all over it. La dee da. Well, let me uh, ask you this, boss: Are you yeah. a kebab man or a HSP man? Kebab. Ooh, too many vegetables for me. Chips. Mm. That's <laughs> all I need. <laughs> Chips. Um, so as we can see, Lloyd Meek, uh, minus 14 break even, projected score 61. If he gets to 61, he will make you 34K. If he scores, he's 100 to 110. He may make, make you 50 to 55K. I yes. am not sold. What do we got? Uh, have you seen Skits doing the uh, emojis in the chat? It's the okay. horse and the squid. Oh, dear. <laughs> You're the horse. You're the horse emote and I'm the squid emote. I love it. Good. Uh, oh, I love that. What do we have now? Uh, Port Adelaide um, take on Fremantle. Yes. So Port Adelaide, like this game. Zach. Yeah, this I reckon this will be the cracker between the two. Uh, Zach Butters, average of 127, break even of 159. Currently mm. priced at 657. If you don't have him, hold because he will drop in price. Yes. Willem Drew, oh. average of 116, a three round average of 127. Can we trust it? Um, I don't think we can, mate. I I just I know he's been good after he's been off the chain, but I just don't think I can fully trust it, mate. But um, I I want to, but I don't think I can, especially like you know if they bring wines back in or something like that. It's just a no no. But someone I can trust, Dan Houston, one hundred eight average break even of one hundred and twenty. Yep, he's just sitting nicely. He's just going to keep on doing what he's doing. He's going to be a great defender for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. Connor Rosie, oh my God, did he take the piss out of Essendon last week? The Average of 114. Yep. Mate, awesome. even though he's been pretty slow before that, uh, yeah, mate, sensational. Um, back to his best. He's got a break even of 82, currently mm-hmm. at 588K. Maybe as cheap as you'll get him. Who do you lean if you have to? Do you go Rosie or do you go Butters? Let's just say price is not in the equation. Probably Butters. I don't know who I like more. I like them both. <laughs> so do I. It's hard as hell, isn't it? Mm. Uh, for like... those of you, for those of you that are in the chat, uh, as we said earlier, we will get to your air, um, question. Sorry, Chris yes. Davis with Mass and McCurcher, Jamie Camilleri. We will get to you, mate. Ian Johnson. I love it, mate. Uh, PW, I agree, mate. But we will get to all your questions at the end. Yes, sir. Now, this next one. Oh, no. I'll I'll talk about him. Okay. Jason Horn Francis has an average of 122 after two games. Now, this is intriguing. The 66% game time last week scares me. And it depends a lot of whether he's going to play on the ball or whether he's going to play forward for me. So. Mm -hmm. There's been a little bit in the media on Twitter and Facebook and all that sort of jazz or social media that this guy's going to get DPP. Well, I can tell you that unless he plays 45% forward in the next two weeks, not that's that's not combined, he needs to play 45% this week, 45% next week. Correct. If he doesn't play 45% forward in both games, he will not get DPP and he will be a midfielder only. Yep. Correct. So as, we can, as we can see here, break even of four. He's projected to score 93 with a projected price change of 41K. Do I think he'll get there? Probably. But he is as inconsistent as the pizzas at Domino's, mate. Yep, absolutely, mate. And uh, I am actually in the min- major- uh, sorry, minority, the minority of people. And I think he plays more forward if Ollie Wines comes back in. I don't want to see Ollie Wines come back in. I know this may shock a few people, but I'm actually bringing Jason Horn Francis into my team this week, and I hope what? He stays, I hope he stays in midfielder. What? Yep, I need someone that is a price rise, so I'm pairing wow. him with Meek. I need him as a price rise for two weeks with Meek, which will get me to Gorn and then wow. either Clary, Dawson, or the other Harris? rating mid. 
Parish. Yes. So right. one of those three plus Gorn. So I need Horn Francis to stay a midfielder. Get me cash. I don't want him to get DPP. I don't care. He's gone in two weeks. But he's the only one that is able at that price to be able to get me a one high score, two price rise. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Let's see if it pays off indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, for me, no. <laughs> but I fucking hope it comes off for you, mate. Thanks, mate. I, I really I take do. a gamble. You know what I mean? I, I like that gamble. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for free man, Luke Jackson, average of 120, break even of 152. Yeah, he might not get that this week, but I'm holding because he could get the better of Soldo this week, and then he's got a really tasty matchup against West Coast mm. next week. What about mm. if Darcy comes back? Did I hear you ask? I don't care because Darcy has played next to fuck all games in the past six weeks, coming back from a knee. And yep. I don't care. As we can see here, two out of the last three games, he's gone over 120 against Port Adelaide. West Coast to poor Rur again this year and struggle with yep. big forwards. He scored 124 the last time they he played against West Coast and averages, what, at I guess 112 there against West Coast in his last three. Yep. Mate, I'm holding until, you know, I could basically get off him and go straight to, I don't have Flanders yet. I could go straight to Flanders there. That's my exact plan too, mate. But shit, I w- I want to wait for that West Coast game more than anything in the world, and then I will go to Flanders after that, one hundred percent. Sarong, he has an average of one hundred and thirty-two, break even of one hundred and fifty-three. Mm-hmm. Didn't get the ton last week, as we told you. He we called it. Um, this week. Does, also, too, does not play well against Port Adelaide. No, he doesn't. So another Love week where you probably be like, ooh. Don't think we should be uh, bringing Sarong in if we have the chance either to this week. So, look at that. Yep, he, he averages he does, 80, 85 against Port Adelaide yep. in his last three. He, he does not perform well when they have big midfielders inside. That mm-hmm. is Frio's downfall. And when we're looking at a midfield, um, it's not as big. So without wines in there, but Willem Drew could shut him down if need be. So oh, he, that's always there in huge. the back of the mind. Another yeah. guy that also doesn't perform very well against uh, Port Adelaide, Luke Ryan. I'm not bringing him on in this week you either. No, nah, could not do it if if you told me to this week. There's not a goddamn chance. Uh, I'll bring up the uh, profile for people at home to, to have a look at because I'll, Luke, I like Ryan, that bit, Luke Ryan, I believe, will be a top six defender this year. He's gone up 32K already. Um, okay. Break even of 127 this week, so he will probably we'll make that. Um, he's averaging roughly 100 and what 107 against yep. Port Adelaide. Yep. Uh, his next two games, he doesn't actually average that much against West Coast either. But I can understand him not averaging much against West Coast because the ball doesn't get in West Coast forward line. So right. it's probably yeah, it's probably worth a play in a couple of weeks if the stats are anything to go by, mate. Yep, absolutely agree, mate. So he's going to be a uh, little bit. Uh, a little bit more for for that, but yeah, I, that's why I'm not bringing in Ryan. Um, yeah. Nat Fife, though, if you held him, well done. Um, average of 85 so far this year, break even of 26 this week. You keep holding, and he's going to keep making your money. So that's fantastic. We kept going. Hayden Young, come on, mate. How's he done it again? A fortnight is a long time in footy, mate, because shit. He was gone from so many teams. Did you know? Yep. He averaged 66 after two weeks. Yep. His average has gone up nearly 30 in two weeks. Outrageous, isn't it? And uh, what's he? He's got a break even of 45 now. So Mm -hmm. bloody hell, that's annoying. But, you know, this is what we are. This is what we got to do. He's a super coach, isn't it, baby? So, um, and he scored 113 last time against Port. So it could be a little something, something to watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andy Brayshaw, average of 111, break even 121. You get what you pay for in 3% of teams. Jeremy Sharp, wowee. He went huge Woo! last week. Where did that 126 come from? Oh, mate. I, yeah, I that have... was outrageous. I'll tell you, that was outrageous work by him. I know he manned up on Carroll and he took the piss out of him for a long portion of the game, but holy shit, 126 from a winger? You'll take that every single day of the week. Minus 51 break even again. He is projected to go up 55K if he scores 68, which means he will be above 300K next week. He's going to make his cash for a couple of weeks. 
if he can get us a couple of scores of 70 and get his price up to 330, 340, 350K, we trade him down to a rookie. It makes us 200, 230, 240K, upgrade another rookie, and then we've all of a sudden got the cash to go bang into a fallen primo. Yep. Uh, Isaac McCurtroy and Roberts, more of a trade out. Um, Kircher, mate. Roberts will get, or we'll both will get DPP. So if you like your DPPs to swing through the back line, mate, and trade out your injured players, then I'd hold both. But if I had to trade one, it would be McCurcher. Of course. Uh, I'm going to quickly bring up one flag. Dons has just gone Grundy to and Jordan to Meekin, J- uh, Jason Horn, Francis equals 350K in the bank and upgrade to Tingles and someone in two weeks. That's my exact strategy. But also, too, you're forgetting that I'm also going from um, Howes down the week after and then uh, to um, uh, Closey and then um, uh, what's his face? Um, McKerchar to um, Combin and that would yep. net me another 300K to be able to get another Primo in. So that's how yep. I'm doing that. Yeah. Um, I do want to bring up two that have just popped up. I know we said we'd answer questions at the end, but these are two really relevant ones I want to talk about. Correct. With Wines back and Finlayson, I'll even put it up on the screen for those of you watching at home. Yeah, you can. Do Thank that. you, Nathaniel. Thank you for joining us, mate. With Wines back and Finlayson out, Jason Horn Francis has a good chance of getting DPP. I still don't think so, mate, because Sam Powell Pepper's going to come back. And then they've got Todd Marshall, they've got Georgiades, they've got Dixon. They'll cover that easy, mate. I Willy think. Rioli. Yeah, that's. I, I like what, what you're thinking, mate, but I, I think Sam Powell Pepper, he hasn't played any footy. If he comes straight back into the ones, he's going to play as a forward, as a pressure forward. And that will impact the fact of Jason Horn Francis going forward. And Jason Camilleri, if you don't have Sharp from Frio, has the ship sailed? No. I'm telling you right now that if you see a rookie, or not a rookie in um, AFL terms, but AFL rookie super coach price like Sharp. So he's gone up 123K already. Awesome. He's got a minus 51 break even. If he scores 80 this week and 80 next week, he could go up another 100K. Mm-hmm. So if you want to make another 100K and make a quick play, mate, you could trade out someone else, bring him in, make 100. Yep. He could make 150K. Who knows? Yep. But absolutely. there's still money there to be made, mate. So I'm not adverse to that. 100%. I couldn't agree more, mate. Um, oh, my God. We get to talk about the best mustache in the business now, horse. Are we talking about you? No, I've got the best beard. We're talking about Ryan from Astute Newstead. I, I don't want to talk about him. No, nah, talk about him. He's great. I'll talk about him. Are you want? Are you wanting to buy your first home or even investment property and don't know how? Are you a current owner with interest rate above 6.2%? Well, Ryan can guarantee you there are better options for you. Best part is he will do it for free. Reach out. He's linked. What is it? Link tree. Not LinkedIn. Link tree yeah, is link below tree. in the description. Or you can give him a buzz. Just do it at 2 a.m. Yeah. 0431 764 and tell him the boys at Insight said to give him a buzz and talk to him or, about money. Or even just tell him how shit Crouch is. He loves hearing that at every single time of the time of the day. So that's fantastic. Let's talk about North the game we all Melbourne. want to talk about. North Melbourne versus Geelong. And I'm going to start off with our boy. Everyone get your Catalina wine mixes out. It's Pow Pow. It's the Tom fucking Powell. Catalina wine mixer. <laughs> Average of 97.3. Look, I know he had a quiet awake last week, but he needed to do that tagging job on Neil. He had 15 tackles, though. You rarely mm-hmm. see 15 tackles. Um, 70 break even this week. I think he'll get that. Um, Geelong do give up a lot of super coach points to uh, midfielders. So I think he should be able to get that. There won't be any yep. tag, I don't believe no. either. She's God. I don't know how many times I have to tell you, boys. This is the premium player for North Melbourne. They need the ball in his hand. She's God. You get him. He's going to be a top six defender. I don't care. He has an average of, what's that, 123? And yep, I don't. And I, what, what's his lowest score this year? I think it's like 121 or something like that. It's outrageous. There you go. Outrageous how well he's going right now. Um, yeah, you just keep on cheesing, so that's fine with me, mate. Um, McKercher, he has an average of 77, break even of 43. Now, the role has changed. He is getting a little bit more midfield time, 
which is not good for Supercoach. We want him on the halfback, but, you know, for North, they need to keep going with um, mm -hmm. trying to, you know, get him used to being in the midfield because he's obviously going to be a midfielder for years and years to come. So that's just how it's going to be. But if you need a move, I don't mind moving him this week. But yeah. um, if you need a hold, I also don't mind of the hold because he'll probably break 43. But, you know, yeah. he has made enough he's, cash. You're basically just holding him because he's going to get DPP for backline. So then you can swing him back. You're not holding yep. him for that much more cash, Jen. Yep, absolutely right, mate. Um, what do you reckon about Tristan Jerry this week? Meh. Don't mind him. Well, Don't love him. But average of 105 this year, break even of 63. I mean, you could go sideways from Grundy to Akshiri. Now, this is the other way that you could go instead of Meek. Geelong do give up a shitload of Supercoach points to Ruckman. And then they have – and then it's Meek are, versus Aren't they the Sherry. worst? Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure there's yep. – hang on. Uh, sorry, they're second worst. West Coast are the worst for giving up Supercoach points to Ruckman, and then it's Geelong. Right. So, I mean – Could be a play. Could be a play. But then you've got to go Hawthorne the week after, and they're one of the worst teams to play oh. for Ruckman and Supercoach. And you've already got Lloyd Meek. Exactly. So that's it. You've got the choice between Lo Lloyd Meek, who's a 100K Lord, Lord less. Meek. Yeah. Shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's where I go. But um, let's talk about also, too, one of my boys. One of my favourite boys, LDU. Zach Fisher? Oh. No, not, a, no, not Fisher. LDU. Look, he has an average of 95. He's dropped 75K so far. I'm really hoping for a bounce back, and I can see it as a bounce back. Why? He always plays well against Geelong. Mm -hmm. Even though we've been absolutely belted by Geelong, 134, 124, he does play very, very well against Geelong. So He's got some if, favorable matchups coming up, mate. Absolutely. These are the times where we want to be uh, having a go with LDU. Um, so we're just going to keep uh, – if you have him, you hold him. But it's. It, I know it's been a rough ride, so – Hopefully, this is a time where we can actually bring him in. He's actually going to do a bit of damage to come mm -hmm. with. But I don't want to talk about Zach Fisher, horse. What do you think about Zach Fisher? No, I don't like him. Break even of 80. He's gone up 15K <laughs> this year. Way too inconsistent to be a primo. Just use him to trade up to a primo. And the bloke that we called out two weeks ago, after he took 15 marks, 21 touches, eight intercept disposals I'd... in the VFL. He comes into the AFL. He does exactly the same thing. What do you call him? The condom. The condom. Charlie Combin. 129 in his first game. So North have got themselves a gem here, and he looks as though he will play that role for the foreseeable future for North Melbourne. I know I'm going early. I don't care. I was toying with the fact of bringing him in this week, but I'm not. But I will bring him in next week. I think he has got such good super coach potential down there. Yep. He, he could easily average 100 this year. Uh, I'd say 100 is a little bit up, but I like where your head's at. I can also say I think the role's there. I think when Griffin Logue comes back as well, it's not going to impact him at all. They're going to continue running him through there as well, which is what they've been training him for. Um, yeah, I, I think he's fantastic. The only thing is if his body can hold up. But, yeah, love that. Absolutely love um, the condom in there. Let's talk Geelong, though, because... Uh, there could be a couple here. Yeah. Do you know what? Geelong aren't really that super coach relevant. No, they really are are not at the moment. Besides like Tom Stewart, maybe Maxi Holmes. I think yep. Jezza could get off the chain as well this week. This week he could. Ollie, Ollie Dempsey still has a minus 14 break oh, even as yeah. well. Yeah. Jai Clark as well. Be nice if they brought Manor back in so we could actually make some coin for anyone that still has him. But mm -hmm. oh well. But, yeah, Tom Stewart, average of 103, disappointing so far, I would say, by his standards. Break even of 168, he's not catching that. Um, he doesn't score as well against North, so a few weeks to come. Max Holmes, average of uh, 97. He has a break even of 86 this week. Uh, he's been very, very good, and he will definitely get the DDP uh, as a defender at the, DDP. the round. DDP. Oh, shit, sorry, DPP. The diamond cutter. Uh, well, we're, I like that reference, though. 
Yeah. Um, what do you reckon about Messi, 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 Messi? Go, 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 go. Messi, 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 Messi. <laughs> Pat Acidoxian, good player. Not super coach for me, though. Too risky. Ollie Dempsey, cash cow, average of 80. Still an yeah. average. Uh, sorry, break even at minus 14. He's been awesome. Jai Clark, only an average of 42.3, but I reckon he comes back in this week and plays a nice little role. Jeremy Cameron, as Skiddy's called it, he's picking him for his squeeze of the week to go extremely yep. large. So far this year, 120, 101, and then 61 and 57. Not what you want from a primo, but could no. go huge. Um, in our final game, we have yep. West Coast playing Richmond in Perth. Could be a rock. Um, do you smell? Like, West Coast aren't going to lose every game this year. If they play no. like they did against Sydney on the weekend, yep. could there be an upset here? I I reckon there could be an upset um, if they did play against how they did against the Swans. Um, but I still think Richmond probably a little bit. I think they can still get it done. West Coast's forward line still a little bit iffy. Maybe if they put Jeremy McGovern forward, yep. hit, hit nudge, nudge. Um, but also, too, uh, if you were thinking about bringing Jeremy McGovern in or if you're thinking about trading Jeremy McGovern, he plays shit house against the Tigs. So I know he's averaging 121 so far this year, but, yeah, he's not very good against Richmond for whatever reason that is. Harley Reid, average of 71 with a break even of 12 at the moment. Was fantastic last week. Um, I tell you what, horse. I goddamn hope Dusty Martin plays this week because I would love to see Harley Reid versus Dusty Martin because this could be the only time we're ever going to see it. Yep. Just fend offs galore. Over oh, under yeah. 10 fend offs for the game. Uh, between both of them? Yep. Well over. Oh. I might actually just watch it to watch this. Because we know I, now, Dusty's yeah. in the climax of his career. Is he going to get to 300? Is he just going to pull the pin? We don't know. And he's realistically, not, he's not. Who, no. who cares? He's making because it to 300. He's, he's been so good for such a long amount of time. Mm-hmm. Been a loyal servant of the game. Coming from where he, he did to play the type of footy that he has, to perform the way he has on a the big stage, winning three norms. You know, he's just he's an unbelievable footballer and I think that the media should just lay off him and let him go out in his old ter- own terms. So as yep. Skitty licks the <laughs> wine bottle that he's polishing <laughs> off, uh, Liam Duggan, now, now. I'm now, actually now. a big fan of this guy. Average of 99.3, yep. and this is after he's 41 in, 49, sorry, in round one. Since then, he's gone 110, 104, 131, 134, sorry. So it could be a sneaky pod. And yep. Elliot. Yo. Average of 104.5, break even of 67. He's been really good. I am buying stocks in him, and I don't care about his injury history. It's really annoying as well because this is one of the blokes that will say, oh, yeah, we could actually have a crack on him, but the body, but geez, he's looked bloody good so far. He's looked so dependable for the uh, for the Eagles. Yep. Um, surprise, surprise, that's all we got for the Eagles because everyone else on the Eagles sucks. Um, they could all be uh, um, nominees for Cone of the Week. Oh, Campbell Chesser has got a bloody good chance of getting the of the week just because he sucks ass. Um, Liam Baker, back this week, average of 82. Um, very inconsistent for Supercoach, but I'm excited to see how he plays because apparently the Eagles have made a substantial offer to get him mm-hmm. over to the West. Um, and according to Skits Fix, there's been some news that he's just bought a big beach house in WA. He comes from WA. Ooh, so there may yep. be something in that. Yeah, it could be definitely. Um, Tim Taranto, he has an average of 94 this year, break even of 102. Not yet, but we can see that. The West Coast, the West Cone Eagles team of cones, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> love that. <laughs> Ian Johnson, you are right. McGovern is an absolute jet for staying with West Coast. That is yep. fantastic by him. I love people that, um, uh, that stay like that one club player and get rewarded for it. Love that. And I love uh, Puddin. He's uh, a gem. Um, Toby Nankervis. Now, I don't know who would have Toby Nankervis in their team right now, but shit, you'd be happy with the 140 next uh, last week and you'd be stoked with him you. playing West Coast this week because West Coast is shit against Ruckman. 
Nank could go large this week. There is a genuine chance. Um, Nine hundred and seventy teams have him. He's in one percent of teams. Damn. Well, if you got him, you're definitely not dropping him this week because he mm-hmm. could go very, very nicely. But he's one that we do need to talk about, horse for Richmond. Shy Bolton. What do you reckon now? Because I know you've been a bit about, oh, I don't know, he's up and down. And I've also been like, oh, no, he's up and down. He doesn't really start the, the season well. Well, let's bring out the, the stats. Well. <laughs> he doesn't score hundreds in his first three games, and then he goes off tap. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that's what I said. I believe it was something like uh, those lines. Yeah, 72, 60, 86. So he didn't ton up. And then no. he goes 119, 133. So what's he at at the moment? Uh, 516K in 6% of teams against West Coast. Fucking hell, the average is 130 yeah, he's against in West captain. Coast. No. And then, wow. Yeah, yeah right. He's, uh, I know. He's, I know. <laughs> this could be a big play this week. Yeah. Uh, 105, 150. 152, 139 the last three games against West Coast. 120 the last time he played against Melbourne. 151 the last time he played against Fremantle in Perth. Holy yep. fuck. That's some yep. form there if you've ever seen it. What's his break even just quickly for me, Horse? It's fuck all. 43. You know what, Horse? I know I said I'm bringing in Jason Horn Francis, but I'm making a live decision. I'm bringing in Shea Butler <laughs> instead of Jason Horn Francis. <laughs> oh, wow. I think you can that, net that, me the coin that I need. Wow, that's awesome, yeah. mate. I'm bringing in. I'm bringing in Bolton. Um, Seth Campbell, average of 56, break even of 31. I'm holding for now, but he's nearly priced out and can get stuffed. Uh, Skitty, Short, Skitty, can I can I get player. a price check? Can I get a price check on Jaden Short? Um, uh, he can still get fucked. Oh, hey, hey. He's still shit. <laughs> what do you have last week? 66. Um, 60, oh, unbelievable. For someone that's in such a good role and such a good player, he can get stuffed. Oh, hold your ghost. You're right. He does have the fucking buy next week. You're right. Yep, mate. I need to stay with Jason or Francis. Thank you very much for that, mate. I got too excited. You got um, way too excited. Yeah. Yep. Well, uh, short, um, no. No, but he's going to be dropping so much cash we can almost get that. Get that shot there. Um, and Nick Velasquez, average of 107 so far, even after the 41 last week. Yeah, I I don't like it in for this week against the Eagles, but maybe another time afterwards. Tom Brown, Tom Brown, um, over 100 this week. I no couldn't chance. see him getting over 100. Very impressive last week. I liked it. If you still need someone for the defender, I wouldn't bring him in purely because I know we can downgrade to Closey um, the week after. So mm-hmm. that's just where I see it now. But if you brought Tom Brown in last week, well like uh, we said, very, very nice. Yep. Tom Brown still yes. has a minus 31 break even as well. Nathan, uh, Eshmate, you are 100% right. I forgot about the buy. I got way too excited. I do apologize. I got... Yeah. Way too excited. Um, Ian, yeah, if you do have Tom Brown, um, you still hold, um, but uh, the time will be running out shortly. Yeah. All right, so there, go- there goes our teams. But now uh, what Skiddy and I do is we like to put together a little segment called Buy, so- Hold, and Sell where we go through the plays that you should be buying. If you've got the players and are considering selling, maybe holding them, and the plays mm-hmm. that you must sell. So let's kick it off with our buys. <laughs> All right, so to start off with, Maxi Gorn. I think Mm -hmm. even though he's got a buy next week, he will never be this cheap again. 660K, um, break even of 75. It's time to get him, even though he's got a buy next week, if you've got the coverage for next week. Remember, it's still best 18. So if you can get away with it, awesome. I'm I'm holding. Yep. Uh, Christian Petraka, average of 122, break even of 140. This guy's a genuine gun. He's at 660 as well. May drop a little, but he is top tier super coach. So if you can look to bring him in now, not next week, week after, then do that. Yeah. Yeah. Tim English, Skitty. Yeah, no, I, th- I think Timmy's going to be probably one of the best two Rackman for the whole rest of the year. Even if 
uh, Darcy's there. It's a little bit concerning, but I think he's just a little bit ahead of Marshall. So I'd still be holding Tingles. Bottom Pally, yeah, uh, he has a break even of 147. There's a genuine chance he can still catch that this week against Essendon. So I still think it's it's time. But Libba, oh my God. Um, if if yeah. I had him, he'd be a VC option this week. Oh, 100%. He is an absolute jet, and I think he can go large again this week. Um, Sam Darcy, if you didn't bring him in last week for his uh, bubble, then, yeah, I, I think you can still buy him, though. I still think you got a bit of time. He's break even yeah. still at a minus 21. You can definitely still bring him in. Loman, he is a buy, but I am not fully yeah. certain on – Bring him in. I think, I think if, he, if his name if he's named on field, and you're looking for a rookie forward, yep, not bad. No, not bad. You're right. Um, I did check this earlier to Hamo that there was someone else that I liked, but I can't remember exactly who it is. Let me double check that. But Loman, you can if he is named on field, but I'm ju- I'm not sold. That's for me personally. Hmm. Lockie Neal, average of 122 this season, still in only 2% of teams. Only averages 96 against uh, Melbourne in his last three games. He could be could be a look. I think it, the ankle worries me a little bit. So for me, it's not, but he's definitely got the the ceiling where he could go large. Um, Hamo, the, sorry, yeah. Hamo's just, yeah, just come in and said Loman's named on the bench, which is iffy. Um, I... I also was saying as well, like, if you're going to go, if you want someone like Loman, I mean, I know it sounds weird, but LaFowle from Richmond, shit. I mean, he's looking a little mm. bit better each and every week. Um, McGinnis, from, uh, Reef McGinnis out for Collingwood, there's a chance you could have him. I just don't think, I don't, these guys aren't getting subbed. Like, they're not being the subs. Sorry. They may get subbed, but, you know, there's players around there. Burgess, Wilson, oh, it's grim from at the moment, really, horse. Yep. So, but I still yep. just don't rate Loman. <laughs> That's fair. Yep. Uh, Zach Merritt, average of 131.5 this year, break even of 115, priced at 668. He's an Uber premium. If you can get yep. him in, you're bringing him in. Nick Martin, average of 120 in his past three, break even of 35. He's hit form and we are loving it. Priced at 533K. Tom Green, average of 132, break even of 134. Porn Don't star. care about the break even. The porn star, he will be a top eight mid come season's end. Lockie Whitfield, mm. average of 110. Uh, average uh, owned by, sorry, 11% of teams. He scored 87 last week after being off for 20 minutes with HIA, which is a head injury assessment. He's done well yeah. to score that considering he spent such a large amount of time on the bench. I still think he's a buy. Mm-hmm. Jack Steele, my boy. We've been screaming oh. about him since start of the year. Woo. Average of 127 to start the year has been very good. And as Skitty brought up earlier in the podcast, he scores really well against his old team. What what do you say? He averages 135 in his last two? I think it's 135 and 143 from memory in the last two. Let me just double check that so I'm not being a dickhead. Uh, Steel. 135, 140 last two yeah. games against the Giants. Yep. Um, yeah, so it could be a sneaky VC option if you want to go that way as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Wang, averaging, swing. averaging, yep, swing him. 106.5 <laughs> this year, looks solid again on the weekend, break even of 88 this week. Uh, I think he'll get that. Uh, Jack Sinclair, he's yeah. back. 124 last week, used the ball well, and the same as looked to get the ball in his hands. Break even of 115 this week. So this may be about as cheap as you're ever going to get him if you want him in your side. Yep. Diddly? Oh, the diddly. Yep. Um, I'm all about stupid, sexy Flanders. Uh, he has a break even at 90. I think he is 100% going to be a top five, a top six mid for the rest of the year. So um, I still think there's weeks where you can get him in, but uh, this is a nice one to go for him if you can. Um, Matt Rao, Matt Rao, Matt Rao. Um, break even of 130. Uh, sorry, average of 130, break even of 126. Really nice role for the inside mid of Gold Coast. Um, they can score very, very well this week for the uh, Gold Coast mids against Hawks. Um, Sam Closey, yeah, we're just buying. It's a pretty bloody obvious one. 102K defender. Mm-hmm. Role looks nice. Ability looks nice. Engine looks nice. Endurance looks nice. Like that, I... Um, 
you can go this week if you want to go early. I understand it, but you know, do want to see another week out of him and see how it goes. We'll, yep. I'm going early on Clossy. Yep, you are going to go for it. You're going to, yep. you're going to pull the trigger. I like it. I, as I said, you can wait the week, but I don't mind going because he is that cheap. It does not really matter. Will Graham, he's one that we can have another week at, but time on ground's a little bit iffy. Could be a sub because he is bloody good at anything that he does. So. Mm-hmm. I can understand waiting another week on him. I'd rather Clossy over Graham. Here we go. Lloyd bloody Meg. He's in for me, horse. So I'm bringing him in. I think this is one where we can just go, you know, this is the best recommend for the price. That's going to still get us money. I still don't think it's a massive thing. I think he can still earn us coin. He's not a statue anymore. No. I think yes. I just want to show this quickly. Uh, Jordan up to Martin and Howes down to Clossy for me this week. Awesome. My 15-year-old son is still thrashing me. Can I kick him out of home? Absolutely. And don't <laughs> let the door hit him in the ass on the way out, mate. Fuck him 100%, off. mate. Yep. He's old enough to get his own job. He can piss off and earn his own yep. money. Yep. Yep. Sort him out. <laughs> <laughs> um, who are we up to, mate? Connor Rosie. He's a massive yep. buy and probably as cheap as you're going to get him, 588K after his 150s last week. Jason Horn Francis. You're bringing him in. Priced at 433k, yep. uh, break even of four, average of 122 after two games. Not sure whether he'll keep up this sort of scoring, but if you're bringing him in to make 100, 100 to 120 to uh, go up to a primo, awesome. Yep. Hayden Young, a fortnight is a long time in footy. Average 66 after two weeks. He now averages 95. Scored 113 last week and has a break even of 45, so he's going to go up. In price, Jeremy Sharp, the 126 last week means that he now has a minus 51 break even. And yes, even though he's at 250k, I'm calling it a buy because he could still make you 100 to 150k. That 126 will be in the system for a couple of weeks yet. The She's God, if you do not have him, and 55% Jeez. of the community do have him, bring him in. 124, yep. he's averaging. He's a top six defender. Just put him in and throw away the key. He is that good. Yep. Charlie Coombin, mate. Oh, yeah, mate. Uh, look, he can wait a week if you really, really want to, but 129 is first week. We did say this, that he was going to go pop off. Um, and I think you can just keep on keeping on as well. So I like it. But if you want to wait a week, completely understand. Mm-hmm. 200 and something K forward. So no worries there. Ollie Dempsey, absolute cash cow. And he is still mm-hmm. growing. Average of 80, break even of minus 14. Yep. Please, thank you very much. Max Holmes, I think he's cl- very, very close to a buy. It's it's on the verge. I think there's better options, but yes, I don't mind it if you want to because he will get DPP of defender. Harley Reid, average of 71, break even of 12. Last week was the start of West Coast really unleashing what he can do. He will get more broken tackles than what his break even is this week. He could almost break the he could almost break the record this week, which is eight by. Do you know who that's by horse? Is it Dusty Martin? That's one of them. And no, I don't know the other. LDU, that is correct. LDU oh. from the North Melbourne Kangaroos, and the other one was Dusty Martin in the Premiership, which basically means that LDU is equivalent to Dusty in a Premiership. Um, let's go to Liam <laughs> Duggan. Um, average of ninety nine, break even of sixty. Yeah, the stinky 49's out of it, though. So I don't mind it. We can just keep – we can actually have a crack at Duggan. It just depends if you think that he's going to be a top six defender for the year. Elliot, yo. Yo. Definitely be a buy if you want him to. He does have that mid uh, defender DPP. Um, been showing a lot better, and he has uh, the 130 in his route for last week. Shy Bolton. Yeah, he's got the buy be, next but week. I yeah, the buy next week really really hurts. So that's where you kind of fade. But he will go bloody big. Uh, I reckon he'll go bloody big this week and the week after and the week after that as well. Yeah. Horse, sell, 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 sell. We're selling, are we? Uh, legend, it's steel, not rail. It's steel. Ah, yeah, okay. Legend said he's steal or rail, the better option, and I said steal. Oh. Definitely right. steal. Uh, 
Let's talk about players you're going to want to sell to upgrade. And to start the list, yes, I'm putting Caleb Windsor at 224K. I agree. Break even to 22, but I think he's near on maxed out. I think you could probably move yep. on from Jack Billings. If you do not, or if you've still got him and he's sitting there, the time to sell was two weeks ago. Comes out. He's actually lost money. Yeah. He, yeah, no, he, yeah, he has. Yeah, no, he's been shit out. So, Blake Howes had a break even to 30 and kept us on the edge of our seats getting to his 46 last week. He's got a buy next week and a juicy 102 defender option in Colossi might be the perfect move. He's got a break even of 55, and I'm nervous that he might not get there. So he may be no, a no, sell. One more week. I have faith. One more week, oh, baby. You're saying one more week. I'm saying sell. Jason Johannesson, yeah. hopefully um, our co-host uh, Herbie's listening in. Average of 84, but after his stinker of 41, he's got a break even of 106. And at 440K, we sell him to upgrade elsewhere. Matty Crouch. Average of 112, break even of 111. Cool if you have him, but don't break the bake if you don't have him. Yep. He is the most frustrating footballer to watch in the AFL. 29 touches agree. last week, 83 metres gained. I want to see Saligo in there full time. They look so much more damaging as a unit, moving the ball forward, taking risks instead of fucking handballing backwards, handballing sideways, and doing nothing with the ball. Adelaide are an easy team to play against when Matt Crouch has the ball in his hands. Oh, 100%. He's detrimental to Adelaide winning games. Um, uh, Colvin McKercher, uh, I think it's almost time to go. He has an average of 77, but that um, midfield role just isn't good for Supercoach at all yet. So we want to see him off the half back, but we can hold for DPP for defender if you really, really want to. That's fine. Zach Fisher, if you still have him, nope. See you later. Don't care. I'm not hearing anything else about it. Uh, Jai Clark, it can be time to go, but I'm still happy to hold if need be because there is buy people that we can get into. Um, if you still have Jaden Short, we are sorry, but see you fucking later. He is dog shit garbage apparently this year. So, if he keeps going down, I may actually – if he gets to, like, 400, 300K, I may have a crack. I'm not going to lie to you, and I might get hurt again. I'll look at him when he gets to 150K. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> um, two more as well, I just want to say. Grundy. Um, I think it's – I personally think it's time to sell Grundy. Um, I think that with the buy coming up, I think there's other Ruckman that we can try and move our way to. Um, this is me personally for myself. Um, I think that Grundy's time to go. And also James Jordan. I think he's pretty much priced out. We're going into the round where it's a um, um, his buy round, and I'm pretty sure that he's going to be maxed out and his role just isn't going to be sufficient enough to make yep. any more cash. Yep. Uh, I just want to shout out to the guys in the chat who we've got questions flowing in and we've got the likes of Chabby Joe. Mm -hmm. Uh, super lucky that are helping out answering questions. We do appreciate that. And that's what this community is all about. Yes, it is the Inside Obviously. Fantasy Sports podcast, but we're all about people helping out each other so we can all do well. So we're a lovely team. work, guys. Please, we are a while, team. We're, yeah, while we're talking about that, like, subscribe, bell, be a triple banger. We love that ding, shit. Ding, ding. Now, we've talked about buying people. We've yeah. talked about selling people. I guess we better talk about holding people that are on the edge. <laughs> Quickly, Tommy, um, I hear what you're saying with Wilson. He can – I reckon he can go, but there's other players that I would prefer rather than Wilson before I get off him. But, yes, if there's no one else, get rid of him. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to talk about holding, but before we start talking about AFL players, I'm holding Skiddy and his bets. I think he'll come good eventually. If you're not part of our Wait. punters club on Discord – if it wasn't for Atkins, you would have come home. That's fine. But I want two bets on the weekend, though. Atkins fucked me out of a shitload. But, yeah, yeah I know what Deadly's saying. But i still got a couple up, Atkins. I mean, sorry, Deadly. I'm going all right. It's okay. It's okay, brother. So, hold. You're holding Dunkley. If you've bought him in, 106. Yeah. He has dropped 36K this season. He's got a break even of 29. 129, sorry. He could be under 600K next week. But if you've got him, you're holding him. Andrew McGrath, which is probably the only other... Essendon player outside of Martin 
and Merritt, if you started with, I'd consider yeah. holding, but there's no other Eston player relevant for me. Hold if you have him, though. He's got an average of 101 this year. Kieran yeah. Briggs, average of 95 so far this year. He's been slightly underwhelming, but he needs to lift to reward coaches who went with him. He did score 109 against the Sainers last year. So he may be... No, he's not maybe. He definitely is worth a hold. Harvey Thomas, he was subbed off early last week, killing any form of big cash gen, but he still has a negative seven break even. And the yep. same goes yep. with Cadman. He's got a minus three. Yep. So you hold yep. them while they're making your cash. Yeah. Jordan Dawson Skitty. Yep. If you, so you have ho- him, you got to yeah, hold if him. You ha- if you have him, you hold him because you've you've already gone through the worst of this bullshit that he's been going through. But he has a break even of 151. I don't care. He's going like yeah, he's going to be bottom dollar, but he's going to improve exponentially from here. So we hold Jordan Dawson, Zach Williams. He has a break even of 69. Uh, sorry, he has an average of 69. Break even of seven. Great week last week. I think he's just going to keep on keeping on. Uh, we could see a good price rise from him there. Luke Jackson, we are holding until Sean Darcy gets back. And then when Sean, if Sean Darcy is back this week, we keep holding because he's not going to be able to run out a whole game. So I don't care about that. So we just keep on, we keep on keeping on with Luke Jackson until we can. Um, Catalina wine mixer, pow, pow, Tom, pow, 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 pow. We keep holding. I know people were freaking out last week. 15 tackles is outrageous in a t- in a tagging role, right? Mm-hmm. Geelong do not have um, a great like a great midfield, and they concede a lot of super coach points to midfielders. Tom Powell will do a lot better than he did last week. <laughs> if you have Jeremy Cameron, you are absolutely laughing right now because he is going to go off in the next couple. So, especially this week. This is going to be an absolute piss take. He scored 120, 57, 61, yep. 101. And he, I reckon he'll go 120 plus if he puts in the effort this week. Yep. Uh, and the last two I want to talk about, Nick Lawson, average of 107 so far. He had a pretty stinky 41 last week. Still only in 2.5% of teams, but you're going to hold him. He had a ripper start to the year. And I see some comments in the chat about Nick Dacos. You absolutely 100% hold him this week. We saw in the third quarter last week that he was just starting to warm up. He scored 49 in a quarter. Yeah, he only ended up on 103, but this is the type of guy that could come back after the buy and average 120 for the year. So I am not concerned whatsoever. Horsey, we got to, we're going to give a fucking absolute shout out. Herbie is in the chat, our boy. And oh, here he is. He's coming and gone. Oh. I'm in hiding until Heaney has a stick. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those of you that missed it earlier in the year, Herbie, what do you say about Heaney? That he, he um, wasn't any good? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he said he wasn't any good. He wasn't going to do anything for our server coach. Uh, bad mouth him every single way. And I don't think Heaney's gone under 120 so far this year. <laughs> let's let's do a um I know I know he won't mind because he yeah, we're just taking the piss her, double five. Herbie but... loves a bit of banter as well because he's the man. So Heaney has only gone up one hundred and fifty-four thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he is the number one ranked super coach player. He's averaging one hundred and forty-four in the last three rounds. He's averaging one hundred and forty-seven. His lowest score is one hundred and twenty-eight. And so far wow. this year, he's gone 144, 136, 128, 148, and 165. I don't That's right. dart darts players don't even score that consistently. Wow. You are 100% right there, horse, but that's all right. We still absolutely love our Herbie Bull, and we can't wait for him to come back in. So hopefully, he's back, he's back next week, we believe. Hell yeah. That is not the reason why Herbie's obviously had some things going on. He's been in Singapore. He's had some family things to deal with. And, yes, Zach Fisher over Heaney. Herbie, absolutely agree. Um, <laughs> going to bring to you boys the top five yep. uh, scores for from... It's time for some news from around the league. I know I fluffed that, but who gives a shit? I've had a couple of wines tonight. Righto, top five most super coach points scored for uh, defenders. We have Brisbane, West Coast, Adelaide, Collingwood, GWS. 
yes, all of these will be in our Discord after uh, after the show. The most super coach points to midfielders: North Melbourne, Richmond, mm-hmm. West Coast, Adelaide, and Hawthorne. Most super coach points to Ruckman, West Coast. That is why we are liking Nankervis if you have him. Um, Geelong, Western Bulldogs, North Melbourne, and Carlton. Most super coach points to forwards. We have North Melbourne, unsurprisingly. Western Bulldogs, West Coast, Hawthorne, and Richmond. Horse, who are the worst teams to score against? Carlton. This is for... uh, On what? By the way. Are you talking about the least super coach points defensively or most super coach points? Yeah, so I got Carlton. So I got Carlton number one, Essendon number two, Geelong mm-hmm. number three, Port number four, and Western Bulldogs number five. The least super coach points for midfielders: mm. Western Bulldogs number one, Bad. Brisbane number two, Carlton number three, GWS number four, and Frio St Kilda tied at number five. Correct. The least super coach points scored against the Rucks: GWS mm. number one, mate. Yeah, mate. Sydney, so that, yeah. That's- um, Rowan Marshall, yes, yes, Ooh. Sydney number two, Brisbane number three, St Kilda number four, Hawthorne number five, and least super coach points scored against for Fords, mm. Melbourne number one, GWS number two, Sydney number three, Rio, and Geelong at number five. Some very Later. interesting takes there, mate. Absolutely, mate. But let's also reiterate that Charlie Common, as he is listed as a forward for Supercoach, he is not a forward. He is a backman. So we He's are an... not worrying about that, about no. Geelong <laughs> shutting him down. So no. don't mind that at all. So we will 100% uh, chuck, chuck that into our experts into chat the, on Discord. Into the Discord, yes. If you guys want that, if there's a couple of players that you're umming and ahhing about, I know we've had a few where it's been like, hey, do we get Steel? Hey, do we get um, Rosie? Hey, do we get Took Miller? Hopefully that can make the decision a little bit easier for you. But Horsey Boy, let's get some bloody captain's choices in on this. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, captain. Aye, aye, captain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Skitty. Yes, sir. Marcus Bontempelli. I've done a bit of digging here, horse. Bontempelli, um, I think it's just it's just a certainty. I think he's just going to go very, very well against um, Essendon this week. So I think that's going to be a pretty easy one to slap your VC on. But, but this makes it a little bit hard. Timmy English. 200 plus against the Dons previously. He's gone mm-hmm. 130 when he versus um, Goldie and Draper. So it makes it a bit of a tough call because it's a Friday night game. Bont English, where do you lean? English. If I had to choose between the two. But okay, the like last it. time, my last time Maxi Gorn played against Brisbane, he scored. 215. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. If mm-hmm. you've got big flax max, you're slapping the VC straight oh, yeah. on that big boy oh, and yeah. letting it ride. Raul and Miller, 153, both of them two years ago. Anderson, uh, not so good, but Hawks give up the fifth most super coach points to midfielders in the comp. Mm-hmm. Butters, 129, the last time he played against Frio. Mr. Steele. 135 and 140 last two times against GWS. That could be a sneaky VC as well. Laird, his his career, best career average is against the Blues. Yeah. And he averages 116 against them. 135 and 144 in the last two games against them. Tommy Stewart Mm. scored 153 a couple of years ago against North Melbourne. Jack Sinclair, Skitty. Mm, Jack Sinclair, this is an interesting one. 160 last time against the Giants, and I know he's at a discount price now, so this could be the time to bring him in. I, I love the fact that you've brought up a running defender there because mm-hmm. Wangani Malera and Bonner, especially if you've mm-hmm. got Bonner, you're not selling him because he's got a, a quite a low BE this week, but St Kilda defenders have 
historically scored really well against GWS. Correct, which is actually very, very juicy for people that do have the wang and the boner. So could be something, something in that. LDU, now, this is the time where people, we need to start actually looking at it when he's able to actually do something and hopefully he can turn around. If he cannot turn around this week against Geelong, he, is, he has an average of 114 against Geelong, mm-hmm. 135 in his last game out, 124 mm-hmm. the game before that. If he can't turn around, I'm I'm completely done with him, but that's all right. Shy Bolton, if you have Shy Bolton, 152 last week against West Coast. West Coast give up the third most amount of super coach points to West uh, to uh, midfielders and to forwards. So yep. there's something something in that. And then my man, horse, Jessica Cameron. Mm-hmm. If he gives, if he uses his full ass. This week, he will score plus 150 quite easily. And if you're one of the people that have him, I think there's a pretty good chance that you'd be able to slap the C on him um, yep. with a VC on someone else later on. So yep. I really, really and like I, that. I see uh, Chabby Joe's in the chat. Love his work over there. <laughs> Send it out. He's, he's got his own um, podcast, which I encourage the guys to go and check out. He does do some Thank really good Chabby. content over there, and I do watch a bit. Um Thursday VCs don't work. I like being outside the box, Joe. I know people say don't go Thursday night, but I'm one for picking the best player each round. If it's Thursday night, then so be it, mate. So it will be Thursday night VC Maxi gone for me, brother. Now, for those of you that didn't see our episode on Sunday night, we introduced an episode or a segment, sorry, to the community called the cone of the week so for those of you that didn't see it we're going to let skitty have his 15 seconds tonight to go over the player that won our very first cone of the week so without any further ado we give to you the cone oh, of the grass so before skitty uh takes off with this this is for the player that was that perhaps did the stupidest thing of the round or was the shittest player of the round, gets now awarded the Cone of the Week by the Insight Fantasy Sports crew. And Skitty has the honours of nominating that person each oh. week. So, Skitty, without any further ado, give us your best, mate. Mate, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give it again because it's so well worth it. I don't like giving it to people that were subbed on or subbed off, but Nick Hyde, that was absolutely fucking atrocious. Oh, How mate. you can run into an open 50, an open goal, shot from 35 metres out, slight angle, and you try to kick it to Kyle Langford, and it goes down to bounds on the full. Mate, I like to try and give it to people that are absolute cones that, Shouldn't have any ability to be on the uh, on the park whatsoever. But my God, that was absolutely atrocious. And I know Horse is a uh, fellow. Uh, sorry, as an Essendon supporter, yep. could not agree with me more. Oh, it was fucking ordinary, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, I hated it. Running into an open goal and he kicks it out of bounds on the full, trying to kick it to a 50-50, 25 meters away when they're standing next to the point post. What am I? Nick talking? Hind, who is also known as the toe ball. Get the fuck out of Essendon's side, mate. You do not Cone. belong. And I'm sure follow Essendon supporters or flagged on supporters, as I like to call them, would agree. So each Sunday night, there will be a new nomination each week for Cone of the Week until we get to the, the end of the year where we will announce the Cone of the Year. Oh. Skitty, before we Nick get... S- has one point. <laughs> <laughs> before we uh, wrap up, we're going to go through our um, questions oh that people God. have dropped in the chat, mate. It's question time. Let's answer your questions for the week ahead. So, mate, awesome. we've been ro- we've been rolling for over two hours. So, there's a lot of questions. So, people. I was, a, I was yeah. about to say, I've got to give a massive, massive shout out to every single one of the absolute gorgeous son of a bitches that are in our chat right now because you blokes are a bunch of legends. All these questions. If we miss one, we are deadly sorry, but. My God, have you guys been absolutely excellent for us tonight and every week and in our Discord yep. and every day, and we love you. <laughs> All right, so Ian Johnson, 
Jordan Grundy D'Ambrosio. Pardon me. To Klossy Gorn Coombin. Thoughts? Not usually good at uh, AFL Super Coach as NRL is meat and potatoes. <laughs> Cheers, lads. Um, I love a good steak, mate. So thanks, Ian. Um, I like it. I do. I think right. there's serious upside with Gorn. There's serious upside with Coombin and Klossy. I think he's going to hold his spot, mate. So I think that is a good move. What do you think, mate? Yeah, I like it. If if there's any way you can just do Grundy to Gorn and Jordan to Combin, I don't. I, I prefer that better and hold Dembrose here one week. But it may be cash kind of uh, mm-hmm. instance. So that's absolutely fine with me. Uh, James say, uh, James Chatterson. He says, "Can I have an ominous opinion on Brody Grundy down to Lloyd Me?" Well, mate, I don't have to tell you twice. That's exactly what I am doing, but it's purely as a cash grab with Horn Francis to come in to get more cash just to get to Gorn. But that's the only reason I'm doing it. PW, our friend from over in Wales. Hello, mate, and thank you for tuning in. We love a bit of outside Australia taste, and we do have quite a few followers from overseas who yeah. DM us quite a bit, so we, we do love that. Uh, if Grundy goes to English or Marshall, a bit of a price difference between the two, but who do you think is the better pick overall? Thank you, guys. Um, I like both, mate, but I think I think English, just. I I think English purely because of, like, historical thing, but also, to Rowan Marshall ha- is going at 1.5 points per minute this year. He is taking the absolute piss when he's on the field. It's just if he can get on the field, Ross Lyon has said that there is a chance that he may be rested as well this week. Yep. So, um, Nathan Eshmaid, love your work, boys. Rank 720. Congratulations, Whoa, mate, in the top one today. Good let's shit. Go. Looking to bring in someone for Grundy. I want a mid, either Martin or Rao. Rao, great fixture run. Martin Cheap, really struggling. You're not struggling, mate, because you're fucking dominating. Congratulations, mm-hmm. mate. Um, it depends what you need, mate. If you want that flexibility of having a mid-defender swing in a couple of weeks, I'd absolutely go Martin because the scoring yep. potential is there, and he's just racking them up across half back. I don't think Real is going to get all that much more expensive, so you can bring him in at a later date. Although with Martin, the way he's scoring, he may make another 70 or 80K and be outpriced. So... If you're looking for someone now, mate, I'm guess I'm not guessing. I'm saying Martin. I'm also going Martin as well. I think with just with how powerful the um, Gold Coast Suns midfield is, I think Rao could have games where he goes a little bit lower. While Essendon really do need that run and distribution off the halfback line with Martin. Yeah, uh, Legend twenty four. Thanks for joining us, Legend. How much do you think Steel will legitimately average? And do you think he's a top eight to ten mid? I think he'll average one hundred and twenty or a little bit more, and yes, I do think he's a top eight to ten mid. Top eight to ten mid easily. I I, I would put a little bit less on it, maybe let's say 115, but I still think he could easily go 120, and he will definitely be a um, top ten to eight mid this season, which he's actually done in prior years as well. Not last year, the year before. He was second rank overall for the whole of Supercoach, mm-hmm. and... We know that he had a little bit of a uh, injury. shoulder injury last year. Yeah, injury, injury interrupted season last year. So yes, I could definitely say that. PW has said if you haven't, yeah, if you haven't covered yet, thoughts on Meek and his very good average when playing solo ruck circa one hundred. Yes, mate, that is why I'm bringing him purely as a price grab. I'm not keeping him for the whole year or anything like that. I don't think he's going to be Briggs last year, but. Yeah. I definitely think that he could uh, earn us a bit of coin uh, mm-hmm. for now. Talk artist Charlie Kerno, once again, finalist for the league's most punchable face. <laughs> Thanks, um, Talk artist. Don't mind that. Shit. I've got to have some, I, I've really got yeah. to have some uh, research on that because I know there's someone that's more punchable. But James Sicily, Nick Hind. Oh, Nick Hind's pretty good. Yeah. Nah, Jaden nah, Stevenson. That's a pretty good one, actually. <laughs> There's some more punchable, though. And I will get yeah. back to you, Jags. Over under 0.5 crouch meters gained with the way he's going. I'm going under. <laughs> pretty um, easily. 
Yeah. One of our uh, legends who's in the Discord a lot. Love your work, Deadly. Yeah, Libba, Steel, or Rosie need help ASAP. Sorry I didn't get this to you sooner, mate, given that you put ASAP and it's probably an hour later. But if I had to pick, you, you could pick all three of those, mate. But Steel is the cheapest of those and probably... I don't want to say he's probably the pick of them because all three could go 120. I think they're all probably top 10 mids this year. For the for the whole year, I'm picking Steel, um, then Libba, then – no, actually, shit, no. Uh, I don't know, but – Skitty? I, think I don't good. like Cheese. I don't like Cheese. I said I'm actually unaware of the stringer thing. Got to explain now. Oh, bloody hell. Okay. String so Cheese. Basically – uh, Jake Stringer from the SNM Bombers. Uh, his nickname is Cheese, um, and he's done things um, that are very, let's say, keep it PG. Okay, unethical towards the human race to his ex girlfriend, and he's a piece of shit. Carry on to the next question. <laughs> okay, Flanders I handled that pretty had, well, I think. Flanders had zero centre bounce attendances last week. That's very interesting. We love your work, Kizza. Yeah, Our Discord operations manager, he runs a really nice show. El Presidente. Uh, good work by Global here. Mass got stuck on the bench for 20 minutes in the last quarter due to Max on substitution cap. So that's probably why his price was a little lower. Oh. Uh, Travis Lubke, do love his work. He's, he's a regular of the show and we love that. Powell was considered a top six forward only last, but dropped off against the Lions. Do we trade him this week? Absolutely 100% not. You are holding, mate. He tagged Lockie Neal, and when he hasn't had a tagging job this year, he's averaged north of 100. He's not going to tag anyone against Geelong, and I anticipate that he will go north of 100 again. Still still 15 tackles while he was tagging Neal, which is outrageous for that. Mm -hmm. If we can combine the two, big win. But even if not, happy bloody days. Jamie Camilleri, absolute legend. We love this man. Um, so if you have Gorn and Grundy with Jackson in the forward line, what's your best advice? Yeah, I would be I, – I'd be uh, – oh, well, I could I could probably answer that because I've got English and Grundy and Jackson and yeah, I've traded right. off Grundy into Gorn this week. Yeah, and I did the I, – I did the opposite of I also have Grundy and Jackson. I pissed off Grundy to Meek to gain cash to get to Gorn. But mm -hmm. I also don't mind of just putting Jackson into your ruck and then bringing in another promo from elsewhere. It's still also a good shout. I'm just risking it. Yeah. Uh, PW again, our friend from the UK. Thank you. I'm what stoked to have found your channel this season. You guys are no bullshit, real delivery. And with the experience to go with it, cheers, lads. Thank you, mate. We appreciate the Bloody love. Earth we are. Legend. You brought up the stats that I failed to bring up earlier. Thank you for prompting me with this, mate. Jason Horn Francis had a 55-45 split forward to mid in round one, 91 mid to 9% split brass round, which has pretty much fucked his forward eligibility. Mm -hmm. um, God, I hope uh, that we, uh, doesn't come back in this weekend. Travis Lubke, a... is it too early to go the condom? No. I don't think so either. No. And he didn't just play on Hipwood. He also played some time on Danaher as well. I know that Brisbane took the foot off the gas pedal, and I know they got too long this week. It's going to be a harder task, but still, no. But I even, would prefer yeah. to leave a, leave a week. Sorry, go on. Yep. Uh, Chabby Joe, even if Gorn scores 200 this week, Marshall will outscore him in the next little patch due to the bye. Yes, you are right if Marshall doesn't rest, which seems more and more likely that it's going to happen mm -hmm. this week. Correct. And if it doesn't, I'm happy to sacrifice – the 80, 90 points that I may miss because I don't think Gorn's going to get any cheaper for the year. As our good friend Jake Skidmore would say, it is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, yes. We've got here from Ian. Jordan up to Martin and Howes down at Clossy for me. Uh, yeah, we already wed that one. Hopefully your son yep. has found a nice bus shelter to sleep in for the night. Would love that. <laughs> Uh, we're going to actual. Grundy to Primos in Gorn or Tinglish? I'd pick Gorn out of the two. Yep, Gorn out of the two, absolutely. That's way more um, way more secure for me because English has uh, Darcy breathing down his neck, which is a pain in the ass and stuff you bevo. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> I just like Ian Johnson's comment. Um, he wasn't sure about what CBA's meant, and he thought it was I couldn't be more annoying. <laughs> uh, as a question, does Skitty still want that double up bolter bit? Yes, as I ain't no bitch. I can't remember what it was, oh. but yes, I will. Uh, I will take it up for you, take it up. I'm pretty sure it was North are going to win this week. So yeah, if you still want to double or nothing. I, I'm happy to take your money. He he always gets fine. you when you're six six beers deep or half a bottle of wine down. Well, so I've he I gets also you felt bad, minus, doesn't he? No, well, no. In fairness, though, I felt bad because that was a pretty bloody easy call for me to make. There was no goddamn way that Jai Clark was going to be able to score against the Dogs. That seemed easy to me, so now I'll give him an easy one, or okay. so it seems. And then when North come out and beat the Cats this week, then he can give me um well, uh, eight. Eight, eight bolters. Eight bolters. Okay. Isaac H, Pink McKercher and Jordan to Clossy, Jason Horn, Francis, and the condom. Yep. Ooh, Anything that involves it? me getting titty out of your side, it's it's a, it's a no-brainer for me. Just And for those of out. you that don't know who titty is, it's Toby Pink because it is. Two in the? Two in the pink. <laughs> and one in the? I'll let you guys make up the rest. Uh, oh, Hamo brings up a good point. Bailey Fritch, most punchable face. Oh, I like that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's good. Actually, um, speaking of Asa, Hamo, I don't mind Mac, well, Mac Krause for most punchable as well. He has yeah. a good head to punch. Yeah. Um, Rory Lobb and Bevo, most punchable face, and he doesn't hate the dogs. You know what? I don't mind it either. Rory Lobb does have a very nice punchable face, but also, too, Rory Lobb has copped a shitload of shit on this podcast already, so you know what? You're right. Let's get throwing yeah. more on there. Now, we've only got a couple more questions. And for those of you that have commented, asked questions and that throughout this, we do appreciate it. And we apologize that it's taken so long to get to it. But mm -hmm. as we always are, we're true to our followers. So we make sure we get through everything. Uh, Ryan Hammond from Astute Newstead. Good to see our sponsor following the show. Sarong or Merit for you uh, in 10 words or less? Merit. Merit for me too. Yeah, and also to please never put my name before Mix. It looks too much more like Skidmark. Mick is always the uh, alpha, and he should always be addressed to as first. Thank you. Oh, you're making me stiff. Uh, Bryce, <laughs> thank you for joining us, mate. Fellas, Martin Steele or Merritt trade in? Merritt. Merritt. Even though Steele and Martin are going to make you coin, Merritt is, I'm going to say, top five. Supercoach. Actually, player. actually, but oh, no, hang on. But Steel is like 100K less. And I think that Steel can also be like, he could easily be top eight mid for the year. No, screw it. I'm going Steel. I like Steel. Oof. All right. I'm going Merritt. And that's not even because oh. I'm an Essen man, because I normally rag out on my fellow boys. Not Merritt, um, though. He's the only one that's good for you. So I know that you won't rag out on him. <laughs> two in the pink and one in the bramble. There you go. Oh. And. Last question that we have for the evening. McKercher to Jason Horn Francis or Roberts to Bolton. I am definitely not trading out McKercher. Matt Roberts, mate. Yeah, no, McKercher to Jason Horn Francis, 100%. We, we saw with Sydney's games the last couple of weeks, they love seeing the ball in Roberts' hands. And yeah. my plan is just to let him sit on my bench or play him as my M8 until he gets DPP. I'll swing him back mm -hmm. and then we'll go from there. His break even is still pit, like – Piss short too. So yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Be doing those. Just before we we are uh, finished for the evening, I'll actually I'll look it up because I'm I think pretty sure it's, it's still... minus. It's either fourteen or minus fourteen, I believe. Let me see. Let me. Matt see. Roberts is currently at three hundred and thirty-five k. He's gone up one hundred and eighty k this year, and he has a break even of fourteen. I'm on the money. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me I don't do anything, boys. All right, there yeah. you go. That's just now, lads. If again, if you're not. Please hit like, subscribe, the bell, oh be a triple banger. If you're not in the Discord yet, it will be in the description below. We would love to have as many people in there as we can talking footy. Every game, every week, we've got a heap of good lads in there that love chatting footy. And it just it just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? And oh, yeah. you know what? My missus loves it because I'm no longer talking footy with her. I've got a <laughs> bunch of lads that we could just talk shit, have the footy on. And last week, I think we cracked 4,000 comments for the weekend. Yep. So let's get it to 5,000 this week and really get some oh, yeah. momentum in there and, and get our communication flowing. 
If you're not already, 913351, I repeat, 913351 is our unlimited code. If you finish top for the year, you will ring a Supercoach ring thanks to the guys at Supercoach Rings. You need to also, uh, if you haven't already, put your standard squeeze bet in, your player plus the top score for the week. If you do, you will win a $70 prize pack thanks to the guys at the standard squeeze. If you don't get it on here, then jump in our Discord. You have until Thursday before the first bounce to submit your entry. Skitty, do you have anything more before we knock off for the evening, mate? Mate, I, I tell you what, I know I say it every single week, but God damn, I love our chat. Our chat is the best bunch of blokes. I would say the word that I'm not allowed to say on stream because that's Australian, but still love all you guys. You guys are absolute jets. If you don't, Please, we have subsections for the standard squeeze in our chat. We also have our punters club as well. So if you'd like winning money, please come on in into our punters club. Um, we've got mm-hmm. great blokes in there that love throwing up uh, a few bets that have absolutely hit, and we absolutely love that. So that's, um, yeah, fantastic. And uh, a big yeah. thank you to you, Horse, for just being the horse. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, thank you. You're too kind, mate. <laughs> um, and before we, we finish up for the evening, Ian, who's the biggest super coach, horse or horse Longmire? It is absolutely horse Longmire. That bloke has nope. got a bigger bang than Johnny Holmes. So, nope, nope. So, horse Longmire, absolutely, or Long Muir, or Long fucking whatever he is, he stuffs us in super coach. We all love the super coach horse more. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you. Um, jump into our Discord, but for this week, this is Skitty. I'm the horse, and this has been another episode of the Insight AFL Fantasy Podcast. We'll see you Sunday night for our live. Catch ya.